Welcome to the show, you guys. This is Design Fundamentals Storyboarding. This is part two. We're going to be doing storyboarding sequential design today. If you haven't the episode already, go back and watch storyboarding part one, where we use this great program called Storyboarder. Today, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do it via traditional tools. I'm Chris Doe, and joining me today is Mark Contreras and Aaron Zagelli. How are you guys doing? We're doing so great. Good. You guys are throwing peace symbols everywhere. You get into the, the whole surf mode here. So what you doing? <laughs> Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Okay, let's also say hi to the ladies in the room. Molly and Erica, how are you guys doing today? Hey, doing Chris. great. We're doing great. I can't wait to see you draw some stuff. Yeah, Mo me too. Molly, can you draw? Um, a, a little bit. You know, I was in your class. You don't remember? Okay. Uh, well, everybody can draw. It's just how well. Nice. Exactly. Uh, good point. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. All right, let's just dive right in, you guys. First of all, I just want to let you guys know we're live on Facebook and on YouTube only. No Twitch today. And as this is a design fundamental series, this video will be left up for a period of time and then eventually it'll disappear via magic. The trolls Ooh, and the elves magic. will come out and they'll take it away. All right, what do we need? First, I'm going to talk about supplies. We're going to do it via traditional tools today. Can you uh, fire that up, Aaron, so we can watch the comments? First off, I like a Mars Stadler lead holder. It's this metal kind of thing that's lead holder, and when you press it down, you get a little point here. And let's see what kind of softness or hardness of lead I'm using here. Let's see if I can tell. I put it right there too. Yeah, I cannot tell you guys, but I use a fairly soft lead. I think this might be HB, because I want to lay down a lot of graphite, and I don't worry too much if it's going to get dirty. This is essential, and right up next after that is just some kind of high polymer Pentel eraser. So we got that. That's just a race, but I'm not gonna even use this if I don't have to, you guys, because we're gonna work fast and we're gonna block out ideas, okay? Next up, I have some inking tools, and this is one of the most incredible values you're gonna be able to find. This is a pen that you can buy from a Daiso. I'm gonna hold this in front of the camera here so you guys can see. It's from Daiso, it's a zebra, and what's really cool about this is that it has a felt tip nib brush, and Could depending- Could you lower it so that yep. it's clearer? Okay, so you yeah. guys, Watch this, when I draw with this pen, if you press lightly, it's gonna give you a very fine line, and then if you push harder, it gives you a thick and thin line. And I love that. Mm -hmm. So if you just learn to work with the brush, so if you hold it on a broad side, it'll go thicker, and if you hold it at the very top, and just kinda let it dance on the page, just glide along, you get a thin line. Oh, nice. And I like that for just my basic line work. Then next up after that is a slightly bigger nib, so let me compare the two so you guys can see. See the difference between the two, you guys? So one has a bigger nib. So if I'm gonna lay down a line, look how much thicker that is versus this, a thinner line. There we go. And you said you got those at Daiso? Daiso, and these are basically like a dollar. Okay. And it's incredible value for a dollar. Yeah, most art supplies are expensive. Yeah, they are very expensive. I, I've seen videos of people crying on camera when they get a marker set. And if you ever love art and huh. you get a marker set like that, I would cry too. Next up is a Copic marker. And this has a chisel tip, like this one. Basically, you can lay down three widths, right? Um, I believe you can go this edge, and that'll give you a nice thin one. And um, there's another one in here somewhere. Maybe it's this side. Yeah. So there you go. So if you use the, the flattest edge, you get that thickness. If you pull it down, you get this one. If you hit it across the broad side, you get a fat line like that. Got it. Okay, next up is a brush tip one called Faber from Faber-Castell. It's a pit artist artist pen, it's the big brush. And this one is black, 199. Look at this tip. This is a lot harder to control, you guys, because you're gonna get a really big line, and it's just hard to control, but it's good for laying down lots of ink. Now you'll notice, I'm not using any grays. I really like to just work with black and white. This is not really about shading and rendering, and I just have to, happen to have a Crayola marker just because I love these things. These are super inexpensive, and a lot of the people who do hand lettering Love these things because again, you can do a fine line, look at that line, and you can hit it really hard. Got it, and it's versatile. No real smell. This is totally non-toxic, it's made for kids, and it's very inexpensive. Can't sniff it. You can't yeah, sniff it. That's one of the downsides. Uh -oh. Downside. <laughs> non-toxic so, ones. The cool thing about this is if you go back to school special, like during the back to school season, you can buy a whole box of these things for a dollar. Yep. With every color. I only use the darker colors, the black, the blue, those kind of colors. Okay, and I'm just gonna have this because we might play around with some quick blocking and shading, and I'm thinking that no matter what happens, we're gonna scan them in and make them high contrast anyway, so we're not really concerned about color. So that's it. 
Now, you guys are wondering, what the heck am I drawing on? These are Post-it brand sticky notes. There you go. And these are three inches by five inches. And why do we use this? There's two reasons why we use the Post-it brand Post-it notes. Reason number one, because they're very similar to the aspect ratio of HD 1920 by 1080. It's not as wide, but for our purposes, it'll be just good enough. The second reason is you don't need to use tape. Once you draw things, you can just take them off and you can stick them somewhere. Nice. And then you can arrange it really quickly. You can move things around without having to lug around some extra tape. Aaron, give me the folder, please. The thing that I said I need. Lastly, there's this little guy. Your basic manila envelope, uh, not folder, manila folder, right? Right. This is what it is. File folder. File folder. That's all it is. It's got a little tab. What do we use these for? Now, when we're doing storyboarding, I'm going to show you guys. We're going to take our sequence and we're going to put it in here. Now, we can lay them up this way. I'll hold it up to camera. So now you can see this here. We're going to have one post note here, another, and we're just going to line them down the page. Okay. That way we can range them. And when we're done, we just fold them up and we don't worry about it. And we're going to stack this in order. So this okay. might be one sequence and then we can move the entire folder sequence together. Okay. So this is. The metaphor for the Macintosh, the folder, mm -hmm. this is where it comes from. Original filing, okay? And if you had more than would cover this folder, you would just stack them? I would just get another folder. Got it. For, but for what we're going to do, we're just going to use one folder. That's it. Those, those are the basic supplies. People always want to know what supplies you use. And at the end of the day, the tools don't really matter. It's your artistry and the story you want to tell. So if you have a cheapo pen, a ballpoint pen, whatever you have, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. It's not really about the tools. But these are tools that I love and I use for a matter of different reasons. One, the control I get with the pens. And I'm also taking into consideration how, how bad they smell, the toxic smell. If you mm -hmm. use a Sharpie marker, there's a really strong odor and it will stink up the whole room. Right. Now that's something that Aaron likes, but it's not something that I like personally. <laughs> you might pass out before you're done with the sketching. Yeah, you know, you gotta protect the brain cells, right? So if somebody has been sniffing too many markers, you kind of fry the brain cells and we can't afford to lose any more. The other reason that I like these is they're fairly inexpensive and they're most like available anywhere. Now Daiso is not going to be around like if you live in Podunk, USA, but in ma major metropolitan cities you can go to Daiso and pick up some of these yeah. pens. For those of you that don't know, it's like the Japanese 99 cent store. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. And it's a pink building, looks... Different yeah. colors. I, I don't remember it as yeah. pink, but okay. it's kind of magenta-ish, right? Right. Yeah. But it, it is a great store for 99 cent stuff. It's great. It's Japanese. All right. Let's put this over to the side. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick recap in case you did not watch the first of this series. Fear not. We're going to quickly step through it. We did not finish the sequence. And now we're going to compare the differences be between working digitally, which is great, unlimited undos, eraser, rescaling, all that kind of stuff. How are we going to be able to do that? But what you give up in digital, you get back in traditional, which is I can control the line. I can spin the artboard around really fast. So you're going to see me lay down ideas. My drawings are going to look better. Mm -hmm. I promise you they're going to look a little bit better. And let's see. And just in case for the uninitiated, for some of you guys that are really scarred, scarred of doing storyboards because you don't know how to draw, both of you guys are not classically trained artists. You both do not know how to draw in terms of like taking art classes, right? Right. All right. So I'm going to give you lots of tips today. And we're encouraging both Aaron and Mark to make some mistakes. And for me mm -hmm. to not pounce on it, but to use that as a learning opportunity to kind of say, hey, if you do this or if you hold your pen differently or here's a quick cheat, here's a shorthand that you can use to represent people and generally it will work. And I want to make you guys more confident about being able to tell your story and not to be afraid of blocking it out. Okay. Okay. Having said that, let's dive in. Let's take a look at what we did last week. Here we go. So if you guys remember, if you recall, we were doing a surfing sequence. The motivation really is to show off Aaron's hot bod, right? <laughs> Which may not be there by the time we finish the sequence, so he's going to have to keep dieting and eating vegetarian. But we have this overhead drone shot. You guys remember that? And then we move in. Like This is Aaron cycling. Uh, where, where are we? We're uh, somewhere. Dockweiler Beach. Dockweiler oh, Beach. Oh, not that beach, please. Uh, Dockweiler Beach on his way to Santa Monica. <laughs> yeah, so it's a really long bike ride. <laughs> okay, and on the side of his bicycle is the surfboard mounted to the side. Aaron's pedaling with his giant feet. Get it? There's an upshot. Aaron's super cool with his Gucci sunglasses and his. What did you call that? Mexican, oh, Mexican poncho, uh, sombrero, hoodie. Mexican, Swe Mexican sweater is what Mexican you call the last sweater. Sweater. Yeah. Mexican sweater. Okay. 
And then for some reason, Aaron is haunted by birds, so we're gonna integrate <laughs> birds into this as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So we have the bird, and the bird reacts to Aaron cycling by, or we imply that relationship, and that's the beauty of sequential art, is when you change the order of the shots, you change the meaning. Uh, there's a lot of pop-ups going on here, okay? And this is a program called Storyboarder, and it's completely free. And we'll provide links to that in the description below, or Molly will take care of that yes. ASAP. Storyboarder, it's totally free. It's an awesome mission that they're on. It's a, it's a program created by artists for artists. Yep. And oh. we're neither, so we'll just use the tools. <laughs> Good for novices, too. Yeah, so the bird kind of reacts to Aaron. He turns his head. He could fly away as if he's startled. Some kind of reaction which will be fairly easy for us to art direct. We don't need an animal wrangler for that because if we find a bird, Aaron just has to walk up to it and the bird will fly away, okay? Or if he holds like a piece of popcorn and he throws it to the left, the bird will look. So we can do little animal wrangling tricks. And, and birds like seagulls like this that are exposed to human behavior, they're not really easily startled, so we can get the shot. And so we see the Santa Monica appear in the background with Ferris wheel, it's an awesome day, the waves are coming in, and we're probably here at the crack of dawn, so it's beautiful. The light is just coming up. It's that, that magic hour, mm -hmm. right? The sun's coming up. Okay, Aaron does a couple things. Um, this is him just prepping. So he's unwinding the leash on his surfboard around the fins. We get some B-roll of the waves. I'm gonna try and use the keyboard here. Um, okay, so we get the waves kind of crashing, coming in. There's a little starfish, and somebody said there's no starfish on, on, in the Pacific. Right. No, there isn't. There is, because I've seen starfish in the Pacific, up in it's Canada. Maybe at the aquarium or something. No, in yeah. Canada. They're all Maybe not around this area, but yeah. in the Pacific well, Ocean. Yeah. I don't know where you guys... Yes, there's starfish. There there's starfish. You guys need to relax. So here's Aaron breaking out the wax. It's Mr. Zog Sex Wax or something. He's waxing out the board. Is that on the surface that you do that, Aaron, or the bottom? It's on the part you stand on. Oh, okay. does it give, give you a little grip? grip? Yeah. Okay, so it's a little sticky? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. And then this is Aaron kind of moving through the water, and I can just imagine this. This is a beautiful Nike-esque moment. Mark's going to chase Aaron out. I think he's going to be a little bit more behind him. And I see an opportunity here where Aaron wipes the camera from behind. So we see the shot, and then all of a sudden it's black, and then he, he breaks into the frame. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to look really good. Mark's going to have some kind of weatherproof housing. He's going to chase Aaron down. Aaron's going to go in the water. He's going to rushing in there. And then eventually he jumps in once he gets, what, waist high? No, way before. Way before, like yeah. knee high? Pretty much as soon as I get Almost. to the water, I just, like, dive. Well, really? Yeah, the water. You'll dive into the sand. I can see this as a comedy. <laughs> this can be a total comedy because the waves pull back and Aaron jumps and <laughs> being smashed. That and only just... happens once, you know? <laughs> You goof up once and you're good. Yeah. Well, I like this shot here. There's a little gray in this shot, so we're doing a little rendering here. And this looks to me like a drone shot. Or Mark's holding the camera up really high, pointing down and hoping that the gimbal is gonna be stable enough and pointing in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So this is a very helpful thing because now Mark has an idea, like I need this kind of lens, this is pretty mm -hmm. wide, or I need a different kind of piece of kit. Right. I need the drone, I need to fly it, or I need to do something, right? Yep. So here goes, Aaron's coming into the water, it's splashing, I can see that beautiful, we might shoot this over cranked, like meaning high speed. 60, 120 frames. We can do the 60, 120 yeah. frames per second, it's gonna give that really epic feel. High shutter speed, so you can see every droplet of water splashing out. Kind of think of Saving Private Ryan when they invade Normandy. It's a shot at a very high shutter speed, so everything's super sharp. Mm -hmm. I can see that's gonna look beautiful. And then you can ramp in and out of that. Anyway, so Aaron comes out. Uh, there's a shot somewhere in here where it's under the dock. I know it's missing. You guys can see it here, but for some reason it's missing. This is a B-roll shot, and it's composed, whatever. It's a symmetry, it's gonna look awesome. And then Aaron's in the water. We're underneath now, so now Mark's got to get his wetsuit game on. He's going to have to float underneath Aaron. We reference another shot from the internet, and it looks really good. Yeah. We know this is going to be a beautiful looking shot with the sun behind him, backlit, water that rays, shot. the caustic, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. God rays shooting through the water. Aaron's looking great. This is Molly's. Uh, addition to our oh, sequence. You're welcome. A little, <laughs> little B-roll T-lapse. It's, key it's, shot it's a key shot. Without the, key the shot, shot the this whole, whole sequence falls apart. Exactly. Falls apart. exactly. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> this is like the, um, what is it? That shot is the hero shot of hero the whole shot. thing. <laughs> Who shot uh, that movie? The meaning, uh, the, the, the tree of life. Terrence, who, who, where are my film buffs, guys? Tree of yeah. life. Is it the tree of life or? I don't know. Thin red line. Who, who, Terrence Malick. 
The guy who like shoots the most beautiful, epic, poetic shots. <laughs> this is him shooting the shot. <laughs> The internet will tell us. We don't talk about idea of the time lapse. The T lapse. She just threw out a random shot. We just we we made it work. The establishing shot. This is not establishing shot. This is an establishing. Establishing. You don't know. All right, you guys. All right, let's bring it in. Bring it in. All right. This is Aaron. Oh, but this is. Wait, you have your wetsuit on. This, no, no, we're gonna do no Ooh, shirt. No is, shirt, okay. shirt. This is inconsistent. <laughs> By the time we shoot this, it's gonna be cool. So you gotta be prepared. It's, it doesn't matter. Okay. Art, art. You know, you have to make sacrifices, man. Yeah. You think those bikini models sit on the rocks and it's comfortable? It's freezing cold, but they have to pretend like, yep, yeah, all is good. Water glistening off that body. It's gonna be freshly waxed, right, Aaron? Ooh. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Oh, Very we'll tan. <laughs> And something catches his eye. Some birds. Some birds catch exactly. his eye. Exactly. <laughs> something in the background haunting But he's ready. Here. He's ready. He sees something and he's going out into the water. He's paddling. Oh man, he's going to catch this wave. It's going to be an epic California wave, chasing which is like two and a half feet high. <laughs> he's chasing it down. Dangerous. And something happened between this shot and this shot. He became a man. He's bearded yeah. now. Ooh. He's turned into. Uh, who plays Thor? <laughs> Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. 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 The women know instantly. The guys are like, who's that guy? I just remember Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. And he's paddling out. This is a beastly shot. Also, this is telling us that Mark is going to be a little off axis on the camera. And Aaron's going to paddle right over him. And he's going to duck into the water. Yeah. I can see that looking great. I can also see Mark hovering a little bit above water where halfway th the lens is cut off halfway. So it's magnified at two different Mm -hmm. Sizes and that's always a beautiful shot, you guys. Like when the over lens, under shot, yeah, the over under shot, half the shot, halfway, so it's all diffracted underneath. And then Aaron's coming at us, and then right when he's about to hit the camera, Mark ducks down, perfectly choreographed. It's Just amazing. Sure your fins don't slice the top of my head. Is it sharp? The fins? No, I can duck sure. down deep. Yeah, enough. you can duck down. Yeah. yeah, you're a professional. Yeah. And then there's Aaron doing something. Well, we'll see about this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? It could be a big setup and he just wipes out right away. That could be hilarious. Yeah. And then we could show a shot of him being hit like on the on coral or something, mm -hmm. rock, and then we can add him some CG blood. <laughs> yeah. And then a shark comes out. So he rides it. We're missing a frame here. Maybe that's the end. Oh, of that was the hero or... shot with the star on the face. That was Oh, was starfish? Yeah, the starfish what happened on the face. I don't know. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. Because I had to re import the file. It said two files were missing. Okay. okay. We will not panic. We will draw okay. them by hand. Okay. What was okay. that shot that was missing? Okay, it was a starfish on the face. Starfish it really wasn't well, that important. Yeah, yeah it was okay. being funny. Close up. Now, what we need is we need an intro and we need an outro, and then mm -hmm. we're done with this. Okay. okay. Let's start at the beginning. Okay. Is that okay? Yep. All right. Well, you know, before go I go ahead. into it, so what is the goal of our story, so the audience knows? I mean, our we're, goal. We're trying, okay. We're, we're taking out. Um, you know, we're taking Aaron out surfing. Uh, we're going to show him going through the process, suiting up, going surfing, but. Um, you know, for the sake of our storyboarding process and shooting, what are we trying to show people? We are trying to tell people a very clear story. This one doesn't need to have a big story arc to it. There doesn't need to be this giant conflict. We're talking about being very clear and intentional with how we frame and sequence things together okay. to minimize the amount of wasted shots and also to protect us from not capturing the shots that we think we need. Got it. They say that a film is made at least three times. Did you know that? Steven Spielberg says this. Yep. The film was first made when you write the script. The film was made again when you storyboard it. The film was made it again when you shoot it. And last time is when you edit it. So you go through this whole process. And if you do this well, if you plan, you, you can actually make the, the film better as you go. But if you don't plan for your shoots, then you capture shots and you spend too much time shooting something that isn't essential and you miss the things that you absolutely need. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Aaron, without a storyboard, a lot of anxiety. Aaron, with the storyboard, really confident. I know how to do the shot. I know what lenses I need. I know what I need to bring with me. That lets you focus more. Lets you focus. Right. Once you know. Yeah. Okay. When you made a good point, you know what to prepare for those shots because if you're just going there without a storyboard, yes, you're just going to be using whatever lens, whatever. You don't even tools. know. You don't even know. You're shooting. You don't know. Like, how would you know? Like, I need that drone shot right there. Exactly. You wouldn't even know. And a lot of people, if you if you shoot enough, you will know. I need an overhead there. I need a transition. And you will soon realize something that the transitions in most things in life are key because otherwise it becomes an abrupt cut. So here's the first idea. You want to motivate your edits. Like why do you cut? For example, if I'm going to touch this mouse button here, that might motivate a cut for Erica to come to my screen. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just talking and it just cuts randomly to the screen, it's going to be jarring for our audience, right? So let's test it, Erica. I'm going to touch this mouse button. 
<laughs> and then she would cut to the screen. I would cycle through some frames, and then on one more cycle, she will cut back to me. And that's how it'll work. We're gonna cut to that master shot. That's how we do it. Okay, let's start at the beginning of the story. Now, we already have Aaron on a cycle, right? And he's cruising out. Yep. What the heck happened in the morning? We talked about this last time, but we did not board it. So let's do this. I'm gonna put my mouse away for a second. I'm put it right over there. And I'm gonna draw somewhere right around Woo! here. Okay, let's get going. Drawing time. Okay, I got my Favorite Mars time. Stadler. It's not in frame. Made in Germany. No, up a little, move it up a little. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, we can see it now, okay, cool. All right, so let's move the art supplies aside. Now, I will be your storyboard artist. And I'll do a couple of frames, and then I want to see you guys do it because you might drop more like our audience. Because I'm already editing in my mind. And here's one key concept I want to share with you guys. You should already be able to cut the film in your mind. You're searching for the shot. You're looking at how to lens it, how mm -hmm. to frame it, what's in, what's in the foreground, what's in the background. But I've had a lot of experience doing this, so I'm doing it kind of automatically. I'm making this decision. So I'm going to do my best to slow this process down and talk you through the decisions I'm making for the sake of education. Okay. Okay. Let's take the first shot. We knew Aaron needs to get up, and surfers tend to get up pretty early in the morning to catch the good surf, right? Mm -hmm. And to get your spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what time are we getting up? Six. 5.30. Okay. 6 a.m. Got a kind of crack of dawn, like the sun's just coming up. Now, what is Aaron going to do to get up? He's going to maybe hit his alarm clock or step out of bed. Perfect. Let's start with the alarm clock. And there's lots of different kinds of alarm clock, but the alarm clock that we're going to get it's going to tell us the time really quickly. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna position the alarm clock next to his bedside table, right? What is that called, nightstand? nightstand. It's called a nightstand. He's, we're gonna put it right next to his nightstand. Aaron, do you sleep on the right side of the bed or the left side of the bed? The right side. You sleep on the right side. So if I'm laying down, is there space to your left or space to your right? If you're laying down. If you are laying down on your bed, is there space to your left or space to your right? Space to my left. Space your left, got it, it's the true right side. Okay, so I just need to know that because look, let's draw for real quick. Here's Aaron's bed. What size bed do you have? It's like a queen. Queen, it's a good size bed. This is Aaron, and he's sleeping. You sleep uh, naked? Yeah. Okay, that's Aaron sleeping, right? And so we're gonna put the nightstand here, right, right next to him. Typically on the nightstand is a lamp, and our alarm clock, we're going to orient this thing in a cinematically convenient angle. Now I normally you wouldn't going. do that, okay? So we need to position the camera somewhere, okay? What kind of bed do you have? It's like one of those Ikea low to the ground ones. Okay, low to the ground, it's like a platform bed? Yeah, it has it's like not a post in the whole platform, thing. Okay. and then on top of it's the mattress. And Perfect, the that's the kind of bed we want. Very modern, very minimal. Who knew you were such a modernist? <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. You're practically yeah. like Ryan Gosling in Blade Runner 2049. Almost, yeah, almost, almost, almost. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to focus on this area here, the alarm clock. So I'm going to position the camera over here. This is an, a symbol for the camera, and the camera's gonna face that way. Can you guys see that the reason why I like a soft lead like this is because it draws a dark line you guys can actually see. If it was a hard lead, it would, I would draw like that, and you could barely see anything. Right. Okay? Like so we're gonna face that way. So I'm gonna draw that now, and I'll explain why in a little bit, okay? And we're gonna use a very long lens, so it's gonna look something like this. Move it out of the way. So I'm going to draw in two-point perspective, because it's easier to draw that way. I'm gonna just try to block it out. Mark, can you move your notebook a little bit? I need a little more hand, hand space there. Yeah. yeah, until you guys draw, let's just keep it to the side. So I'm gonna draw two vertical lines. That's going to indicate an angle here. So I'm gonna draw something back like this. And the faster these two lines converge, the, the wider the lens is. Okay. You guys understand that, right? Yep. So I'm gonna push this back. I'm gonna push this back here. It's not that deep. These things are not that deep, okay? And I'm gonna draw, if you guys wanna know the center point, what you do is you kind of ghost a line like that. That's at my center point. So if I ghost, then you draw it on the third try. That is the center of this thing. That's the rule of perspective. Right. That's really easy. And now we're going to say it's 6 a.m. and I'm going to use one of those digital clocks. Uh, maybe I'm going to do another halfway point here. So I'm going to say this is two thirds or three quarters, three units this way, like this. I'm going to guesstimate. So these are all even units in perspective. Okay. 
and this will be some other function. I don't know what that is. So this is the entire area from here to here. Okay? okay. So far so good, guys? Good. Okay. So we're going to say it's uh, 5.59 a.m., something like that. So I'm going to roughly draw in some lines here to kind of show where my time's going to be. Let's say this is the zero. This is the five. The two dots. 50. I'm going to make sure those lines line up. And I'm using those like LED style things because they read really fast. Can you guys see what's going on? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. 5.59 a.m. Usually there's a button up here like that you can smash. Yeah. Oh, I like that button. The snooze button. The snooze button. <laughs> I hate that button. button. Okay. And then there's usually a little platform that this thing sits on. So I'm just following the lines of perspective there. Everybody get get it so far? Yep. I don't know what this is. Uh, maybe there's some buttons here. I'm just making something up. Uh, maybe there's a pattern here for a thing. Now, this is angled towards Aaron, so the bedside, uh, the, the table is going to be somewhere like here. Right. Something like that, and we're going to catch the edge of that nightstand, and then we're not going to see this part. And we're not going to see the lamp, but I'm going to draw it somewhere in here. One of those. This is circular shape behind here, something. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like a figure eight, you know, some, some kind of lamp like that. Okay, that's our drawing. And now we can go and we can shade it, we can do whatever we want, but that's it. So that's gonna let me know. This is not, I'm sorry you guys, it's, it's 059? Not 15. It's not 1559. Yeah, like, that's 359. Whoa. Thanks for wondering, but nobody yeah, says anything. No well, I wasn't sure with a line. Okay, so now I'm just gonna quickly ink this in, you guys. And I'm going to go really fast here because it's not really that important that this be perfect. Indicate a little bit of space there as if it was inset inside. And if you guys want to get real trick, you can just leave those kind of indentation line, right? And now this goes here. And I'm going to push this back. And then this bar, this little smashy bar. Whatever it goes, something like that. Smash. Okay, yeah. and we know that this is going to be in darkness here because it's really not a lot of light that's going to get through there. This is going to be dark here. So I'm just doing this for fun. You <laughs> wouldn't normally see. This is super high fidelity for a storyboard, right? No, this is not. No. This is super crunchy, dude. This is sketch. This is pretty sketch. Yep. I mean, I'm I can see what sketching. you're doing with the perspective because I can imagine the vanishing points are off to the side, off the paper. Yeah, you guys get that? Yep. Yeah. And I can even indicate a little, little line here. Now I'm getting a little bit too trick, right? Yep. So it looks like glass or something. Yep. And we can block this part out. Now, generally speaking, you turn the thing to, to the direction that you're most comfortable drawing. You can draw much straighter lines horizontally than you can vertically. Because okay. your hand moves like the this. The way that your arm Yeah, you follow the arc, uh, the joint of your arm. Okay, so I'm on turn it here. I'm going to quickly block that in. And if I indicate this as heavier on the top and the bottom, and I just do a little thin line, that shows that it's got depth. And I'll just do a couple of dots here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Boom. Okay. Okay? And we really don't have to draw the rest of this. We, we kind of know. Now, Aaron, oh, okay. since this is your house, Right? You see the you see the deal, Aaron? Yeah. So we know the time. Yeah. yeah. So right now I would draw this. Now while this is drying, I don't want to mess around with erasing it just right now. It's not even necessary we erase it. And as a tool for us to communicate, Mark, you and I and Aaron, we all know what this is, right? Right. Yeah. So this is the first shot in our sequence. What's going to happen next? Well, I was I was going to ask you about this. So Go ahead. This shot. Is the action that it goes from 5.59 to 6, and then yes. the song starts? Beep, 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 oh. or whatever, or it's like, good morning, whatever it is. Whatever, song, music, yeah. whatever we want. We can cut that in later. Yeah. yeah. So what we'll have to do for this shoot is we'll have to do this a couple of times. We'll set it to 5.59, and then we'll roll camera, and it'll turn, and then your hand's going to smash, smash it. Do we have to draw that hand smashing this clock? Is that the we next do not have frame? to. We're not going to block out frame moment to moment. We know the story beat. We're, we can just make a note. If I was a much more talented artist, I would draw the hand halfway through. 
hand smash. And it's already 6 a.m. Right? Okay. right. But I'm not that talented. We can imply that we know what's going on. Yeah, we, we, could, we, we can know get it. so many variations of the shot, know. too. Okay. Exactly. But for our purposes, we know what we're going to do. Exactly. There's another thing that you can do is you can draw the light on into this frame. So, for example, the curtains shoot out a little bit of light. Mm -hmm. You can hold a flag to it, and you can slowly lift uh, it open like so it looks rising. like the sun's coming through. Like That's how the light draws on the frame, and it's a beautiful effect because it, it hits each edge, each mm -hmm. plane, differently. And it's a beautiful thing to do. It's a very cheap thing to do, okay? Cheap meaning inexpensive, not cheap like it's stupid. Got it. All right. Aaron smashes the alarm. What's the next logical thing that we might do? Uh, get out of bed. Okay, and what, where are you going to go? So right now, I want you to take me through a couple of moments, and then we will figure out where to pause in time, because we're editing this in our mind, and then we'll figure out where the camera needs to be. Okay, so I get out of bed, take the cover off, I put my shorts on, and I go to make a cup of coffee. Okay. Uh, I make the coffee, I drink it real quick while watching whatever TV show I'm into. Okay. And then I grab my wetsuit and a towel, and I stuff it in my backpack. I put my flip-flops on, my Mexican sweater, my shades, and I go out the door. Mm -hmm. I go in the elevator. You don't brush your teeth? No, no. no. <laughs> you don't go to the bathroom? That's why, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why he comes to no work. No wonder. That explains a lot, dude. <laughs> Dirty I'm dog. Like, <laughs> Dirty dog explains a lot about what's going on no, right now. It, we're in rush mode here. I gotta get to the beach. <laughs> oh, you've been in rush mode. Well. You should brush your <laughs> teeth, <laughs> please. He just gargles. I brush in the... my teeth when I come back from the, oh, from the no, beach. Oh no, Aaron! If it's my right. mom is watching, <laughs> it's okay. I literally your dentist I'm is freaking home, out right now. You know. Okay, so basically you you have a. Aaron breakfast, which is coffee. raw teeth and coffee grab. <laughs> whatever I had left over, or I eat my roommate's leftover, whatever's in the fridge, I just eat it real quick. Okay, so we're going to do this now, you guys. I'm going to let you use my tools so that they can say, well, you can't handicap the guys by giving them different tools. Who would like to draw the next moment, and we'll talk about it for a little bit. Mark, you draw. I'll go for it. Okay. I'm, right I'm going to draw also. Okay, you guys both draw. Well, so what's the next moment? Did we decide? You, you have to pick. pick one. You have to pick a moment. So Aaron, tell me the moment before you draw. I'm gonna draw the Talk coffee to... going into my little cup. Okay, and then Mark, where would you like to park it? I was gonna do the same shot. But... That's fine, do the same yeah. shot. Okay. So we can compare. So you guys go ahead and do that, and I will take this moment now to read some of the comments. You guys keep doing your thing, Okay. all right? How many people are watching now, Molly? Uh, 269 on YouTube. And on Facebook. Rock said he's like, I'm doing product design, maybe, maybe not. Surf report. Screw that surf report, man. They always lie to you. Do they really lie to you? Yeah, because they don't want you to go out there because then it'll get all crowded it's for the rookies. Hey, Mark, yeah. could you push it further into frame? Yeah. Okay. Whatever's comfortable. Thank this you. is my version of a coffee maker. Don't worry, Aaron's a really tough guy. Right? Now you guys know you can jump on the internet and use reference. Safari or what, whatever web browser you want to use, Chrome, and look for references. Now I don't drink coffee, so for me, the whole coffee thing is a mystery. Okay? It's like tea. No, I like the coffee maker. Uh, what it looks I, the I, process I don't really of, pay attention to The process that at all. of making the coffee in the pot. Oh, yeah, I don't drink coffee either. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I think it's Asen. He's like, it's 2 a.m. still watching. I love you guys. Love you too, man. We love you. Molly, are you checking out what's going on with Facebook? Yeah, I'm on here. How many people are watching on the Facebook? 55 right now. 55. So YouTube always kills Facebook, right? Yeah. I don't know why. Even though everybody's on Facebook supposedly all the time. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. I'm not sure. You guys are doing a great job, by the way. I wouldn't worry too much about cross-hatching, okay? Stay away from that. Just block up the form. Don't worry about the colors or anything like that. Just get the form right. Dude, that's pretty okay. good, man. He is pretty good, that's dude. That's not bad. That's a basic coffee right. maker. All right, I'm going to put this back. So we got the okay, coffee maker. He's Check mine out. Getting his... Oh, I like the tighter macro shot. That's okay. cool, too. Now... Wait, that's not in the... Sh can you oh, okay, don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to talk about it, guys. Okay. Maybe it was the magic pencil. Next time you get the pencil, Aaron, instead of the pen. Look at what I got. Look at mine's broken. Ballpoint pen. I got the... Well, who told you to get that pen right before you got on the show? <laughs> you had all day to prepare for this. All day. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Let's take this one at a time. Let's look at Mark's shot. Mark's shot has a really good...
good looking coffee pot, I think. And there's a maker in here. It's re it's very flat. Yeah, a little square. A little square to the frame. This is where his perspective skills might be like tested mm -hmm. here. And I don't get a sense, a lot of sense of action. Right. Okay, it's very flat shot. So we need to put this on the counter. We'll probably have a tiled wall behind it. There's like some something is going on. Set it in right? a place. Like saying. yeah, when you frame the shot, you're not going to be looking at it straight on flat to the picture plane. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to do that. Okay. And another thing, just a small detail. My coffee machine is like you put a cup. Okay. That's okay. It doesn't matter. He doesn't know. Yeah. Unless he went to visit your house. So what we're gonna do in this shot is we want to kind of turn the camera a little bit. What we don't want is everything to be parallel to the picture plane. Do you guys know what yeah, I mean I when I say that? Get it at an you angle, angle. So you have some. We want an angle. To a little it. bit of an angle. That's why I drew the box the first time. So let's try this again and let's get a box or a box in there somehow so that we get a sense of place. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to, we'll let this thing pass. Yeah, we got fire trucks and ambulance all okay, the time. Okay, because we'll edit the show later. Okay, what you want to do is you want to be able to walk the scene in your mind. Like, it's kind of like as if you were looking at it right now, where would you position the camera? Is it closer? Are you wider? What is going on? Mm -hmm. Where's the window relative to the coffee maker? Mm -hmm. We can manipulate all those things and that's what you can do. Okay. Okay? So let's try again. And I want you to just quickly block it out again, and let's see what happens. Go ahead. Now, now it gets a little. No, no, just one. Okay. Here, so that we can see. Okay. Let's okay. say it's in the corner. Keep keep a light hand. That that helps, right? Keep a light hand because it's very soft lead. Good. Okay, so this is gonna be your kitchen. Like, counter. do you already see it in your mind? Yeah. Okay. Good. I do. Good. Good. All good so far. This was, let's say this is a window. It's a good looking corner so far. So far, so good. <laughs> let's extend this up here. This is going to be your kitchen window. I'm going to put your coffee pot here. Yeah, you, can, you can put right the coffee the pot wherever you want once you get to my house. It doesn't have to be where I put That's it. That's right. That's the genius yeah. of all and this. It looks, stuff, there's right, good Aaron? lighting in the morning at my house. I bet. There's some rays coming through. Well, either way, we're going to make it look good anyway. So we'll find a spot for it. We'll open the curtains, we'll do something. Yeah. Okay. While Mark's drawing here, I'm going to hide this in case I want to go to the internet. I'm going to go to coffee maker. Because I don't know what a coffee maker looks like. What perspective is You should put uh, espresso, espresso machine because that's what it is. Yes. Oh, did you bring it home? No, my dad gave me a new one. That's why I brought the, oh, you have this two. one in. Oh, well, I think I saw mine. That's mine, dude. Which one? This one. Okay. That's exactly the one I got. Uh huh. Okay. Nice. That's great. Okay. It, it's an individual. It's basically a C. Yeah. Uh, people on the internet can see this. It's basically like the letter C. Can you imagine it turned to the side, like the C? That's how I think of it. You're talking mm -hmm. about the spout. Where the, the no, 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 comes no. Out? I'll, I'll explain it a little bit. So this is the Breville. Shoot. I don't want to advertise here, so let me go to Breville Espresso Maker. And I want to see different angles on this thing. I'm trying to get my angles right So this right is good here. where we have to have references. See, see, it's like the letter C here, Aaron. Can you see this? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see. I break okay. everything down to simple, simple shapes. I see what you're saying. Much easier to go. Mark's oh, trying to lose himself yeah, in the drawing. I'm losing myself in the perspective You are losing here. yourself in the, the drawing. The perspective is a... Okay. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me help you guys out, okay? So we, we when the reason why we draw it really flat because we know how easy exactly. that is to do. Okay? So all you have to do is change some of your lines and you're good again. That's all you really need to do. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys some ways of doing this. We're gonna burn through a lot of post-it notes today. Okay. For the purposes of education, you guys. And I wanna take this moment to let you guys know if you appreciate the show, you appreciate what we're doing, how we're trying to share this knowledge with you. We have a fundamental belief and a mission here that information should be for all. Knowledge should be for all. And the only way we can make that happen is, is if enough of you guys step up and become a sustaining member for $5 a month. We get enough people to do that, enough people do that, the, the people who can't afford it can still watch and learn and get themselves out of poverty into a place of, um, what do you, what we, we're not going to say we're going to get into a place of wealth, but at least you're living a sustainable lifestyle. That's what we're really trying to do. Yeah, I was thinking like when you learn stuff, it kind of it makes life a little more meaningful. Cause yes, it just adds depth. For sure, and you can grow, and that's what you're we're really doing for people. Okay, now 
You notice the first thing that I did with the other one was to say, I want to lay out the kitchen. Most kitchens are an L shape and they're centered around the sink. So you have a double wide on a sink, Aaron, or a single? The main sink in the kitchen. Oh, it's got uh, two parts? Two parts. Okay, yeah. it's got two parts. And then you have the faucet and some other bits and pieces, right? Right. Something like that. There's just like all tile here. Right. So walkway. this is a wall. Yeah. And this window is the curtain here. edge. Right. Almost always the window is set right in the center of the sink. So yeah. I'm trying to get my orientation. Okay. And typically there are cabinets above here yeah. and here. Mm -hmm. Okay. The coffee machine's there. Okay. So the coffee machine is there. So it's going to be here. And we yeah. know that it's a letter C, but the bottom is wider than the top yeah. no or it's close it's close right okay yeah so this is where we're going to be and is there a return on this side or a return on this side Aaron? what's a return an l no it's just like a long hallway okay two countertops like it's a galley style side. kitchen that's what they call it, galley okay. like you just only on one side and what kind of counter is it tile tile yeah okay so tile. we can really quickly just do this and i'm going to talk to you guys about drawing now I noticed Mark was doing the old chicken scratch style, and I want to tell you not to do the chicken scratch where's style. The, where's the, one? the the fill in right here. We'll, 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 we'll talk, talk about, about it, guys. We'll talk about it. Okay. When you draw, I want you guys to get into the habit of just drawing a line. Okay. Not be going confident over and, and, over and just go. And over it. We don't do this. Chris just taught me that. The old chicken scratch style. Mm, it's okay. a it's like a hairy dog style, you know, mm -hmm. like that's a hairy dog. Right. Versus like a smooth Asian man. Just smooth <laughs> like a dolphin. It takes okay. a lot of confidence to make it. It does line. take a lot of confidence. And it takes a little practice. You take a breath and you yeah. just go. Right. If you draw with the arc of your elbow and you use the forearm, you're gonna get a much cleaner line. Oh, okay. So yeah, you knows. just draw like this, right? You know how when you hold the camera, you hold it out here, it gets really shaky. Yeah, you gotta okay? rotate. You got to bring it closer to you. So look, when I draw, if I'm gonna draw like that, I'm just using the natural arc right here. Mm -hmm. That's how you can draw a perfect circle. You're using the pivot point of your arm to draw. Got okay. it. Imagine if you try to draw with your wrist. You have less That's play. Good, you have less play. So That's lock your arm tip. and draw. Lock your arm and draw. So okay, lock drawing your wrist. lesson, not just storyboarding. Not just lesson. storyboarding. Well, storyboarding is drawing, so yeah. this is what we're doing. Now, I'm gonna think about the coffee pot right here. There's a cup. The sunlight's gonna shoot through here. I'm seeing that, oh, I, I need to put this in a place where you guys can see. The sunlight's gonna shoot through here. It's gonna create an awesome little shadow here, even though I told you not to draw a shadow. That's gonna be beautiful. Aaron needs to come into the scene, so I see Aaron here, his moppy head right here, his, <laughs> his stank breath, oh, and God. he's gonna come in and he's gonna get the cup, right? Right. So he's there. Now, where do we want to orient the camera? I would like, Okay, camera Mark's gesturing like side. over here. Yeah. This is the universal symbol for camera direction, you guys, right? Two like fingers? Weird, like the two fingers, okay. the split finger technique. Joseph Kahn, the director, has funny little bits and he makes fun of directors even though he's one. He's like, there's this, yeah. there's this, and there's this, right? So there's lots of ways to frame Chris, it. you do that all the time. Like I do, I do. I'm like, come on, guys. Two fingers. And then I'm not talking way. about peace. Get so we're saying an over the shoulder, off angle, that's one way to do Backlit it. Backlit with the So coffee. I'm going to show you. You be my art director, I will be your storyboard artist. You tell me what you want to do and I will do my best to draw it for you. Okay. I want a tell me where the camera, camera angle at about the level of the counter. Okay. And it's going to be pointing from Aaron's left side. Yes. Right here. Okay. Towards the window. And you want to get a little bit of Aaron's left arm as he approaches. He's right handed. Okay. Right hand. Yep. Going into the coffee pot, but you right. want the angle to capture some of that sunlight backlighting the coffee pot. Okay. So it's like... All right. I think I got that. Okay. So now this is where we get into lots of trouble. How are we going to frame that? And I'll tell you. Start with the vertical line. Start with the vertical line. Okay? Okay. And that's going to be my corner of the room. Could you shift the post-it notes? Yeah. We'll, we'll keep a, a, a booby trap of post-it notes so that I always know where to put it, right? It'll always be here because I have no other room to put it. So what we need to do is draw the counter line. So you say that the the, uh, the counter is at kind of the height of the, of the lens, right? So I want to do something like that. It's all curvy because I'm holding this funny. Okay? So it's going to run back that way or something like that. Okay. Can you guys see that now? So I'm going to just quickly... Um, I can see those chicken lines. <laughs> no, there's no chicken lines, dude. The chicken line is an unconfident line. I just missed shot. There, there's a difference there. Okay? Yep. So there we are. 
and we're gonna put Aaron somewhere in here. We're not sure yet. How close do you think Aaron is? Do we even see his head at this point? No. Okay, so yeah, maybe this is where his arm is, okay? This is a very simple trick. What is Aaron gonna do with his arm? I think he's gonna bend it a little bit, and he's gonna bend it back like that. That's his arm. Okay. He's got a t-shirt on. Or are you naked at this point, Aaron? Only shorts. Hopefully clothed. Only shorts. Because I don't want to shoot this. He's going to turn Okay. Put some clothes this on. This is a different kind of show, ladies and gentlemen. So there he is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw that C shape that we talked about. So I'm going to draw vertical lines. Remember, I was trying to tell you guys, draw vertical lines. It's not really that big, so I may mm -hmm. get the scale a little bit off here. It has a little bit of a base. And then we're going to continue the perspective, right? Mm -hmm. I messed up there because it's not supposed to converge like that. And then there's a back to it, which I think is a slight angle, something like that. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm just doing my best to kind of be within the ballpark of believability. It doesn't have to be spot on Joe Perfect. We know that in the center of this, there's a divot like that. There's a dial like that. So you guys can Pretty see good. the C. I see the shape. Okay, you can see the shape. Yep. If we take this line back and follow the perspective line, and we make this go with the table. That kind of tells us the back side. This will tell us the front side. And then you see the C shape. Got Think it. in big, simple shapes, you guys. And there's a little handle majiggy thing here. And it can stick out to any side, right? Or always cock to the left, Aaron. It, it's cocked to the right because you put it in and lock oh, it Oh, so in. it's that way. Yeah. OK. So it's turned away. We draw the cylinder shape. And then that's coming. And then we just have a cup underneath here, right? One of those little small cups. Small cup. Or a big cup, whatever. Whatever. It's a cup, right? And then we have a couple of buttons here. We have one button here, and we have two buttons here. Yeah. And we're almost home free at yeah. this point. That's okay? good enough, That looks pretty and good. And there's a handle here, and I'm going to have Aaron reach in for it, okay? So if we look at our own hand, it's going to be like a C shape with a thumb sticking out. An easy way to draw hands, because hands are very difficult to draw, is imagine a mitt on top of your hand. So you don't have to worry about these parts. Imagine a mitt. So it's going to curve in like that. And he's going to have a thumb like that. Uh, Does that make sense? Yep. Now, if you then break this up and you just do the digits, and then you there's your hand. Fingers. That's it. Got it. More or less. OK? All right. And the window is going to be here. And I can barely see it. And it's going to cast a shadow across here, probably like that. So we're going to follow the lines. And this is the yeah, bottom. If we're lucky, maybe we can get it, yeah, like the sun coming from the back. Maybe oh, we're going to get it. Come no, no, no. We're going to get it, guys. Yeah, I'm going to throw a lens flare right here. Because it's going to be right in the lens. Super cinematic. Okay. We know, and I, I told you guys not to do this, but I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to make this in shadow. So there's a nice core shadow right there. And again, I'm going to follow the line. It's going to be in shadow right there. We also know this is going to be all in shadow here, including this base. There's a little divot here in the center. And now we've gone way too out of control on our own storyboard here. Okay. Yeah, now, is... let's get in and... Done with the shot. Yeah, now we're done with the shot. Okay. <laughs> Aaron, you're going to take the next shot at this, okay? All right. Now, I'm at a really awkward angle here, guys. Um, so he's got his. Switch to the frame. Switch. So here's his elbow here. He's got a little forearm muscle, okay? Get that Apple Watch. <laughs> Is it on on here? Yeah. Let me see your Apple Watch. That was a big square face. You wear that surfing? Yeah. That's the whole point, right? You don't have to bring your phone with you. So there's this t-shirt, guys. Dude, that looks like me. Too bad I can't draw this dank breath. <laughs> yeah, I wish you could. I can almost indicate Wait, that's it. not copy, Steve. <laughs> so God. here's his thumb, right? And there's the fingers. He's reaching in for it. And there's the mug, the handle. Draw it real quick, guys. And I'm going to draw a vertical. Notice how I move my hand. You can see that I'm doing that because it makes it a little easier for me to draw. There's the edge. A little divot there. And I'm going to do this. Clean up my perspective here while I'm doing this. Sorry, guys. I'm trying so to be mindful of the camera and the angles here so you guys can see. But it's very awkward for me to draw on these weird angles. Normally, I would not be drawing like this. Yeah. You can't. Right? What's your th thought process when you're sketching from pencil to pen? So when you're drawing with pencil, you're just getting the bare lines and then 
Construction lines, mostly. Okay, so that's okay. your foundation. That's the foundation. So it has this little thing at the top here. There's a little detail here. Now, I'm not trying to be a professional storyboard artist. I'm not trying to get a job to do this. But what I'm trying to do is be able to communicate with you fine folks, right? Meaning you two guys. Mm -hmm. You're like, what fine folks are you talking about? Okay? Make it a future mug. I could do that. That would be cool. That came from the audience. And are, oh, there, okay. are there key things you want to indicate when you're sketching? For me, as, say, the cameraman, like, you know, if you're shading, those are some indicators of light. Um, anything that you would, you know, list for motion or? Those are all very good questions, Mark. Thank you for asking those kind of questions. I'm going to tell you the answers to that in one second. Just trying to, like, get this thing to work, okay? okay. Now, I'm going to go and switch markers nice. here. Okay, you guys can see it coming yep. along, right? I'm going to switch to my Copic here, and I'm going to block this out. What I want to do is to make some of the decisions already so that my DP, you, can already be engaged in the shot. Like, oh, dude, I know exactly what we want to do here. And i got some other ideas to plus it. Okay? So I just want to kind of indicate lighting and things like that. So okay. I don't want to shade everything because it's going to make this thing incredibly difficult to deal with. Okay? But I can draw a shadow here. I can draw a shadow here. This is all going to be in shadow here. And for the sake of the audience, just so they can see how this thing works, I can lay down really thick lines, whoa, fast. This is where my art center education went, okay? Yeah. <laughs> now you guys can see that. If I made this black and reflective too, then you guys can see this. Once I am able to erase this, it'll look a lot cleaner. I said not to cross hatch and shade and all that kind of stuff, but I could indicate a little line for his fingers, right? That's it and then the padding of his thumb. That's Aaron, that's his watch. Pretty you see cool. how we did that, you yeah. guys? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not that you guys see that? More than enough. Yeah. It's coming uh, in, a steam, you know? I like it. All right, okay. That's the next shot. And we'll let this sucker dry, and eventually we'll erase all these things. We got two shots in an hour, we can, <laughs> we can get through this, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Top to bottom. Or oh, you can leave it anywhere. Right. You can leave it anywhere. And it, ultimately, we'll leave it in the inside, but we're not worried about that right now. Okay. Do we want to show them taking a drink, or are we done? I think we're done. done. Well, maybe we shoot it, but for the sake of storyboarding, I think we would know what happens between that and the next okay. shot. Okay. We got to get him out of the house. Yeah. We got to get him out of the house. Or his next thing, like, he's going to be riding to the beach in his wetsuit already. Right. No. No. Well, you pack your bags with sweater. Stuff. Like yeah, the bag has a wetsuit and a towel in it, and I'm wearing the shorts I put on. Like gloves. an open face bag? The same backpack I bring into work, the black one. Okay, you stuff stuff in it? Yeah. Okay, great. So you're going to put your clothing in it, and then you're going to go out the door, and then you'll change at the beach, including brushing your teeth, right? That's when I get home to the high fidelity. <laughs> I gave you one more chance to, uh, to fix that <laughs> sin. Why don't we switch seats and get all these... Cheap junk, crappy pens away from me because I'm allergic to them. Because you're gonna go in. Yeah, because you're gonna draw it out. Oh, so I want you to take the magic pencil. Let's see if the magic pencil actually makes you a better artist, okay? So Aaron, you're gonna try to draw right around here. It's an awkward position, but do your best. No, right, right here. See, see how it's like. <laughs> now you know how uncomfortable it is. Just following the rule, move the thing. All right. What try not drawing? to block the whole shot, dude. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you think about the next shot first. Pick where you're gonna be. Whatever you do, don't put my pen in your mouth. Okay? My OCD <laughs> would just freak out. See, that's why I never don't let you guys... Pencils now. First of all, you brush your teeth, and then you put my pencil in your mouth. It's going to like... Nyeh, OCD is going to oh go out of control. Oh my god. This is really helping my uh, ladies game. I'm sure. <laughs> Aaron likes to put dirty things in his mouth. Boom. That's you want to kiss marker. that face? You want to kiss his face? All right. Just for the record, I brush my teeth after surfing, all right? Before you meet people. After, yeah. Before you meet anybody. Just to keep oh, the birds away. Yeah, it's for the other surfers. Aaron, you should have just said before it's you ran mace. out of the house. Okay. I'm going to cut that out. It's 5 o'clock. Hey, Chris. Hold on. It's 6 after 5. We got to keep rocking here, so let's keep going. Aaron, first pick your shot, and I'm going to talk to Molly. Pick your shot in your mind, and then go, okay? Molly, what's up? I got a question from Owen, and he says, "How do you guys translate from a translate a complex camera movement in a drawing?" You can draw the A and the B, the, the beginning and the end point, and that could work. A lot of storyboard artists like to use arrows. I personally don't like it because it doesn't look cinematic because you never see those arrows. But you can see in a lot of our shots here 
that it indicates either movement by the principal actor or we can imply camera movement. I see. So you can draw the A and the B, the beginning and the end, and you can just have a conversation with your DP about it. Okay. Or use arrows. Okay? Okay. All right. Cool. Just want to clear that up. Aaron, come on. What are we drawing? You, you haven't articulated anything. You're just... Okay, I'm going to draw me leaving the house. Okay. Leaving the house. So your bag's already packed. You're ready to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You going out the back door? Front door. Okay, is there one Or should door? I jump off the balcony? Sometimes no. I do that. Oh, well, whatever you wind up doing. No, I won't do that. Action hero. Mm -hmm. Whatever you wind up doing naturally. Oh shit, you guys can see everything I'm doing. Yeah? Pretty much we can see everything you <laughs> do and hear you. <laughs> hear what you're saying. And this is a program. I'm that's having a hard time evergreen, Aaron. Drawing evergreen. myself from the back leaving. So he's, you know, running away. <laughs> it's starting to fall apart already. All right, let me just Think about the here. action that you're drawing. Focus on that. I ordered an action figure, you guys, a, a pose model just for storyboarding, so we're going to hopefully get it before the next session so we can pose that person. That way we have a reference point. This is where my years of nerdom looking at comic books really helps me because I've seen these poses a hundred or maybe a thousand times before. So this is where we kind of need to update our visual vocabulary because mm -hmm. we've seen these shots. Somebody's worked through this problem a gazillion times. Right. So Aaron's doing a couple things. One, he's not clear about what he's drawing, and he hasn't walked the camera through the shot. He didn't draw the floor plan like I had suggested, so you know where to put things. So when you're drawing something like, something like this, do you establish the, the location first and then put the person into it? Is that an easy way to compose it depends. a sketch? If I knew I had to anchor around the coffee maker, yes. Mm -hmm. But if it's around Aaron jumping over a fence, no, I would draw the action first and then put the scene into it. Got it. It really depends. And if you practice drawing enough, you can start drawing the shot from the hand or the eyes. And it doesn't matter because everything else is connected to it. Mm -hmm. and just really think about that. So this is me leaving my apartment. This is the outside world here. This is inside my apartment. This is a coffee table. This is a backpack. Okay. And this is me walking. So that's not a great action shot, right? Because it's a uh, backlit, right? Because the outside, you're facing the outside right now. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be like a silhouette. It's kind of a yeah. silhouette, but because when people walk and you look them straight from the back, it's kind of hard to see what's going on. Okay. That's why when they do 2D character animation, they just film them straight on and they just walk because their body just shifts a little bit and you can't tell. Mm -hmm. And that's what ultimately is going to happen. Unless Aaron is sprinting out the door, which he could be. And there's ways to make that shot more interesting. So let me jump back in there. Okay. Now, theoretically, I've shown you how to do this via a floor plan twice now. And the fact that you avoid that is saying, I got a better technique than you, Chris. I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> Let's go back to the technique. Okay. There's a wall here next to the door. Or it's just a long hallway. This is my living room. There's a TV here. Okay, okay, but table. if I were to draw a box, most rooms are in boxes, right? Yeah. Orient me, where's the door? Right there. Right in the center? I mean, depends where we're looking. Are we looking well, top down? It doesn't matter. No, this is a floor plan. You guys know what a floor plan yeah, is? Top down. Yeah, we're looking top down. Top down. That's what okay, a floor plan gotcha. is. So Point. the room is more this, this shaped. It's, that's but, fine. Okay. So the door is here. So we're doing it this way. Yes, we can do okay. it in any direction. <laughs> door's here. <laughs> your oh brain God. can't turn this in your mind. You have to actually literally turn. Okay, the door's here. It opens this way, right? Like it that? opens the way. Um, That's how you drew it. I think I drew it wrong. I think it opens, it opens the, other the other way. way. There's two doors. There's the one door, and then there's like a big metal Can you door. make this a little less complicated? All right. Just it, pick one, dude. The door opens. It doesn't matter No, it doesn't way. matter. I need to know which way the door opens. All right, let me think for a second. Have you not left your house a thousand times It opens times like this. Outward? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having trouble remembering it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I only hired the best and brightest in the world. <laughs> no, no. The inside one opens this way. There's two doors. There's two doors. An inside door and an outside door? Yeah. You live in the hood? No, but the guy before me was like paranoid. Okay, so he that's had fine. That that's in. Okay. Which like way does it open? What do you reach for? Left hand or your right hand? I reach with my left hand okay, to the I, right side. I know which way it. it opens. It opens exactly the way I drew it. And then the other door opens, opens the, the other way. Right, it opens the opposite that's way. That's why I was confused, you know. Well, that's one reason. It could be all that <laughs> sniffing. Okay, now, is the scale approximately correct? There's about that much width to this? Yeah. 
Let's do while I'm still young, okay? So yeah. we gotta get through this yeah, shot yeah. here. Okay, we have some other stuff. What else do we have in this room? This is a TV. Okay, TV. This is where I put my shoes and stuff. Not too much detail. There's a little Furniture. mini bar right here. Mini bar, okay, I need to know that. This is, there's a couch here right. to watch the TV. Love seat or a two-seater? What is it? It's like a two-seater leather. Okay, yeah. like that? Yeah. Very modernist it. Ikea? It's like old school. It's okay, what else? There's is a there coffee a table? table right Is it here. round? Is it square? It's a rectangular shape okay. coffee Boom. table. Yeah, this is pretty standard living room. And I think room. that's pretty Land. much Is there a plant? It. A rug? No. Okay. So now we're going to put you in here. So we have to make a decision here. Is Aaron just grabbing for the door? Has he flung the door open? Is he already on his way out and slamming the other door? Where is it most interesting? Remember, we have to walk mm -hmm. through the scene in our mind right now, you guys. Where is he? Maybe he's already on his way out. Take them outside. Okay, so least. that's one option. So these are all the decisions that you, yeah. as a director or a storyboard artist or an editor, get to make right now, because we're we're making the film. So Mark says we're already out. So he would be here already out, moving that way, right? I go this way. It doesn't matter. Elevator. Here. It doesn't really matter. He, he's just leaving. So we're gonna catch just the tail end of him leaving. That's one shot. Okay. The door handles here. Door handles here. That's one shot. Or we can get him just here reaching for the door to open about to open yeah so we want to catch it at the beginning of the action or at the end not in the middle the middle is not that interesting we right. talked about that last time okay mm -hmm. so now we get to decide where do we want this camera so we need to make a decision and i'm going to let you decide you can have position one or position two going that way i like position one okay so you're going to reach for the door and that's where we're going to be yeah. now where do you think the camera needs to be where it's going to be most interesting Um, so not right behind because don't, don't worry start, about right? that you, you have a new opportunity it's a brand new day where do you want the camera let's make some decisions real quick I mean I'm just thinking it's just not that interesting anywhere around there no matter yes, where you it put is. the camera oh yes it is it is yes I can find spots for you that are very interesting maybe somewhere here so that when you open it's like right. revealing the outside right those are your instincts and let's talk through your instincts for a little bit if the camera were over here you wouldn't see Jack. Oh, yeah, the door's gonna, there, yeah, you yeah. can't put it so there. The back of you're gonna have to put it here. Door. Yeah, you're gonna have to squeeze the camera between him and the door. Yep. That makes total sense, right, you guys? So let me draw that real quick. The camera's gonna be somewhere around here. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So we can actually cheat the couch forward and be behind the couch if we wanted to. So it's in the foreground. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of tough because there's like a bit of a hallway here. Okay, so we didn't draw this room right. It's not exactly right. Well, but... thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, it doesn't really matter. Good job, Aaron. There's another I shot. I mean, that's why I chose this, instinctively, because, well, you know, it's right. kind of like that. But... All right. This is not instinct. You know your floor plan, and we don't. There's another shot that you can do. You can do another shot right here. And you're first thinking, well, that's a stupid shot. Okay? Yeah. And then I would say, no, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no. I would say, yeah, what we do is we drop the camera underneath the table so we get the legs of the table underneath and so Aaron really we just see the shadows of him leaving which could be a really interesting That'd shot cool. just real low to the ground We're low to the ground and we just see shadows and footprints like your legs okay? or right you just see the shadow that that could be really interesting yeah right that's another shot okay okay do you think this is I mean conceptually me leaving the house is this a useful shot it doesn't we matter cut right we're, to we're the committed biking? to it we're gonna do it no okay. we need a transition shot because it'd yeah. be too weird it's a transition from going in let's go. House, you guys house. are slowing the process down, so let's go. Come on. Which, where do you want me to put the camera? Which yeah, one are you going to try? Somewhere here. You want me to do it under the yeah. table? All right, watch. Put this to the side, okay? Although, hold on. That's not going to work because my table, you can't. It doesn't have legs like that. It has like a long <laughs> yeah, leg. Yeah, but we have art department. Okay, we, we just bring the table. table. Yeah. Oh, we, okay. can, well, we can do whatever okay. we want. Make a shot. All right? Okay, okay fine. Throw that in. Let's just say the table's a problem. We can't go underneath it. It's a solid table. Yeah. Let's just say, we can still do the shot. I'm going to show you how to do the shot right now. So right now, Mark, I, I have to kind of think about where this table is relative to the room. Mm -hmm. The angles in the shot really lead the eye. So I want to orient things kind of angling towards Aaron somehow. Yeah. So here's a cheat, you guys. Here's a cheat. If you don't know how to draw in perspective, you're going to draw the Y shot or the inverted Y shot. And I'm going to draw the Y shot right now. Again, I'm going to start with a line. Let's say the line is right here, kind of in the center of the room. I'm going to draw a Y, like it's going to be like this, and it's going to be like this. 
What does this represent? You'll see. This is the corner of the room. From this, I can then orient the door right here. So that's the ceiling at the top. That's the ceiling. We're looking up. There's an upshot so we can see the room. Now, people on the internet might be a little confused at this point. Yeah, I'm a little okay? confused. Now, we're going to swing this door open, right? So it depends on where we want this door. It could be here. So the door is swung open right here because it's the beginning of the action. I drew that door a little bit too thick. This is like a bank vault because that door is way too thick. And then let's just say there's a little door handle here. Can you guys see the room now? I can see it. Okay? Because I'm looking up at it a little bit. Now I can drop in the table. It's going to follow this line. It has to be parallel to that. Okay? Mm -hmm. The table's here. Now, I've realized something. I've not given myself enough room to put Aaron into the shot. What I need to do is reframe the shot. I need to move this over to the left. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay? I'm just going to move my Y over here. I'm going to move the door over here. Does that make sense? Yep. So I'm going to erase some of these lines. lines. Aaron seems really confused at this point in time. Yeah. I, I said I would not use the eraser, and here I am breaking all the rules. Cause Maybe I could see it because I don't know exactly what his room looks no, like. No, he yeah, just I'm can't tell. I'm conflicting. Yeah. I'm com my don't worry about reality. We're, yeah, we're storyboarding right now. with reality right now. We're, we're, we're just storyboarding. Are there windows here? No. At all? Well, that's kind of depressing. Yeah. A little depart dark and depressing. Okay, anyways. There's the door now. Okay? So Aaron is going to be here on his way out. He's a tall guy, so he's he's going to be close to the top of the door. And his hand's going to be over here, and he's already ready to go. That's Aaron. This is his body. And he has a backpack on, right? Yeah. There you go. That's your backpack. Now this is the, the table, and it's the table can still exist where it's going to be. I believe the arm of the sofa is going to be somewhere in, into the shot. I'm not sure. And if it's not, we can make it. We can make it. We can cheat. So here's where I think maybe Aaron's kind of coffee cup sitting here. I don't want it to be on that line. Let's say it's right here. So there's a little continuity from the shot so from before. Connect the two shots. Right? And what could be cool is if Aaron walks by, there's still a little steam left. Maybe it goes like that. Like he's driving the air out. Mm -hmm. Right? So there was steam normally would rise up, and he's, he's taking it that way. That's a lot of information, but that's okay. And we know that the TV is here somewhere. It's like we're going to give him a 65-inch player kind of boom, 4K <laughs> HD. I'm trying to get HD. that 4K you guys got. but Stop thinking about that. <laughs> I believe I know your technique on how to get that. So he's got a quaff of hair. He's out. All right. That's a shot. Like How's it. that feel? You know what? No, I do see this. No, <laughs> Need to finish it. the entire drawing for Aaron's yeah. imagination. Is there a chandelier or a can lights? Is it a flat My ceiling? My butler's waiting for me to the right, coffee right. cup. Right? <laughs> Maybe there's a beautiful girl. She waves goodbye to you. Yeah. Aaron, goodbye. The Come dog, back. the dog's goodbye. like, get out of here. <laughs> the dog, is there a dog? No. Oh. No dog. Okay. I wish I did. All right. Now, let's go in and ink this thing. Okay. There's. It's really rough and sketchy, but I think I can pull this thing off. Okay? What we have to do is we have to respect this line right here because that's the edge of the door. So we can't cut that line off. So Aaron's hair, his ear, there it is, backpack. I don't know what it looks like, but I'm going to say it looks like that. It's a big backpack, as far as I know. And this hand is out the door. OK? Then Aaron's going to make a move on out. And what we want to do is we want to bend the, the joints. Nobody walks around with a straight mm -hmm. arm. Nobody walks with a straight leg. So you just bend the joints and you're good. That can Are be you wearing shorts? That too? can be his action too, yeah, right? Shorts. And then he's wearing this, the Mexican, uh, Mexican sweater. sweater. There he goes. I gave him biker shorts, guys. So when you bend the joints, does that convey action? Yes, it conveys motion and it just motion. looks more natural. So now I'm just drawing in the lines here, you guys. The lines that Aaron could not see in his mind because he was stuck with reality. Okay? Now, Aaron might be a little messy. We don't know. We could add a little something in here. We could add a, a magazine splayed out like this. I think mm -hmm. he is messy. We kind of just assume he's going to be, given that he doesn't brush his teeth or anything. Yeah. yeah. Brought up right? a good point. Where's your surfboard? Bowls and plates. It's, uh, it's, it's already outside. outside. It's already outside. It's already in the garage. garage. Yeah. Okay, got it. He brought up a bad point. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we can add little props and things to kind of draw our eye towards Aaron. All towards the door. All towards yeah, the sure. door. Okay? We can do that.
Right now I'm going to just draw the cup, you guys. Notice how I'm changing my arm. It helps with my drawing. Okay, and I'll just do a little steam. You mentioned an important point. Like when you're when you're framing out a shot, you really want to pay attention to what your focal point is and have everything draw to that. Correct. Correct. So, how like what are ways that you can do that? It's perspective. It's other objects in the scene. You know, human beings, we're like these blobby messes. It's hard to tell unless you have a really chiseled face. It's hard to tell kind of where people are. So I look for hard objects to kind of tell us what the perspective is. Okay. Because you can put a person jumping in space and you won't know what the perspective is. It's kind of hard to tell, right? Right. Let me just do a little something here, a little sketchy line. I notice you start with the corner of the room always. Well, that's what's going to anchor this whole thing. And my perspective is a little bit jank here because these lines should be converging in the same way and it looks like it's going the wrong direction. But you guys have to oh, forgive that's me. Good. That, that's, that's a little really hinge good. here, okay? And then we have the inside of the door. Boom. Someone said toothbrush in hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've given up on the toothbrush. Yeah. We've given Aaron many, many, many chances to rectify that, and he will not. I know. He refuses to. He believes that's the cool lifestyle he lives. Boom. Yeah, I got out. the shot. I know you got the I, shot. I think I know now what you know I what to do. do. Okay. We can add some detail in here if we wanted to, which I will because I'm crazy like that. Like there's the lip of this thing, and since it's solid. Maybe there's like um, an open. This is this another IKEA piece, Aaron? No, this is uh, an old wooden wooden wood thing. Table, so yeah. maybe there's some lines. Maybe there's like a little cutout for where you pull the handle. And then there you go. Now we get the idea. Yep. It's good to have big objects in the foreground. So I might frame this a little differently when you guys are there to bring the coffee cup much closer to us. But again, I'm not that skilled at drawing, so we're gonna live with this. Okay. Mm, that's good. All right, we had we had three shots, three shots, you guys. Here you go, Mark. Yep. I'm going to now look at those three shots together. So give me that. Now we have a sequence to look at. It's an editor that I went to take a workshop with. His name is Steve Odette, and he said that one won't, two might, three will. When he's talking about patterns. When you're mm -hmm. editing, it's about patterns. So we couldn't really make a sequence with one shot. Mm -hmm. We might be able to make it with two shots, an A-B shot, but three shots now, now we can see a pattern emerge and we can see if we have a problem or not. Same, with, uh, same goes with a lot of math, too. Yeah. <laughs> so remember, math? guys. Oh, with math. One oh. might, or one won't, two might, and three will. Three will. So these, we have, these are obvious the order, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, because we, we, well, do it. You, you, you'll see something really soon. Now this is the old school way of storyboarding. So now we have three frames, you guys can see that. Alarm, coffee, and Aaron's out the door. Mm -hmm. That's kind of very... Can you hang, hold it up? Yeah, yeah, I will in a second. Okay. I will. I, I want to talk to my bros. <laughs> okay, so with that movie, mm, I forget his name. Who directed Snatch? Mm, yeah, I know. Guy Ritchie. Thanks very much, you film buffs. Guy Ritchie, <laughs> done. Darren Aronofsky, the same thing. Uh, shoot with the drugs, tie it off the rope, and uh, what is it called? People's dilate, mm -hmm. and then the blood goes in. Oh, so it's just, it's mm -hmm. very fast. If we might want to make it more cinematic, we probably need to bridge the shot. So I'm going to hold it up for the guys at home to see. Okay? So I'm feeling like it might be abrupt. Let's look at this now. Unless we want to do that quick, snappy style. That's how I was picturing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So look at this, you guys. How can we make this a little smoother? While you guys think about it, I'm going to go ahead and erase some frames here. Okay. Uh, clean up the frames a little bit. Hopefully it won't smudge too bad. I have an idea. I'd maybe, love to hear it. Maybe something of me putting on the Mexican sweater. Is that the end of your idea? Yeah, me putting on Mexican sweater between one and two. Okay. Bless you. Okay. Maybe oh, rubbing my too. eyes or something. What about a foot stepping out of the bed? I like that. Like a low, That's nice. low angle. Low angle, yeah. foot out of the bed. Put my Step slippers out. on. Packing the bags with your wetsuit. Yeah, that's we didn't show that. We're yeah. not there yet because we're just getting out of the house. and. Well, in the house. Yeah, but I, do, I have a backpack, and then it's like, where do you oh, get right, right. the backpack? Oh, right, right. Yeah. Right. So this is where, if we know we have the anchor 
the moments that we absolutely have to have when you're there, you guys mm. can just add to it. Because right. you feel confident, like, hey man, we got these shots, and Aaron, do that again, and we're gonna reposition this, or we want you to pour it a little differently, so we have some options. Right. Okay? We have some options to do some close-up shots now. Is that a term that they use, anchors? Uh, that's the term I'm using. Okay. I, I, I'm sense. a self-taught storyboard artist, right? I'm a self-taught lots of things. So I, I, I just make up whatever terms. I Does it to. ever happen to you that you erase and, and it totally messes up your drawing because you didn't ink it properly? No, I ink it properly. It's just you didn't wait for it to dry. No, I mean like then it just doesn't look the way it did before. Like you're Oh, missing I see, lines. I see. You're missing lines? No, because then you can go back and you can fix it. That's not a big deal, right? Okay. All right. So there we are. Aaron's got that rip form, whatever that muscle is called, got that line. Tibial. I can really go in there and detail out his musculature, but we're not gonna do that. Let's try really quickly now. Can everybody see this? Let me let me move it into place. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Down a little. Down. Down a little. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Basically, we can just do some tight shots now. Let's try Molly shot. Let's try another shot. Each one of us come up with one idea, and I would draw it really fast. We won't go through this process of you guys trying to do it, I okay. would just tell you what it is. And you, know, you tell me and then we're gonna do it. Let's go. of, is that cool if I just mess around here, draw go something? Ahead. Yeah, but where's your pencil? Oh. <laughs> you can use my pencil, go ahead. No, okay, no, let's move this out of the way. Let's move out this way, all right? So let's all try to do the same thing at the same time. Okay, okay. we're doing the same okay? shot? We're all do the same shot. Let's first do the foot out of the bed. Okay. Okay, okay. everybody just think about it and then draw. Beautiful. This is going to reveal a couple of problems. This is going to be good. Hey, Molly. Yes. Have you tried go. storyboarding? I actually took to Chris's this. class. How was that? It was amazing. But I, it was good. It was really good. And then I figured out I didn't want to do motion design anymore. <laughs> oh, so you were originally going to do motion design? Yeah. And then it was just a little too intense for me. Ah, gotcha. Well, that's right. what I'm here for. I do the animation and yes. you create all the that's pretty right. stuff. That's right. Let's see, did they start perfect. drawing? Let's okay, there we go. All right. I'm almost done with my shot. And then you have I'm a trick draw. for drawing feet, like you do with the hands in the mitt? Yeah, put in a sock. Sock. Sock it is. Boom. Aaron has very feminine legs. I'm gonna give him a little more calf action here. And I'm gonna draw the little knee things. The knee and, and, and the foot muscles are very tough to draw, you guys. But I'm done. So I'm gonna go in ink, draw the knee, draw this part here, give him a little calf muscle. And then the little ankle bit there. And I'm gonna show that the slipper is just kind of out of frame. The knee joint thing, same thing. Give him a nice beefy calf muscle because he's been at the gym. All that hard work, it's been paying off. <laughs> and this is the heel, he's gonna slip on. Are those on. slippers? Yeah, <laughs> they are. So this is the bedside table here. And I'll, I'll give it some detail even though I don't know really what Aaron's table looks like. There's the leg and there's the bottom side of the leg. Go easy on that pen there, dude. <laughs> what did it ever do to you? i to do some really distinct what lines here with some chicken scratch <laughs> in there. And then we have parts of the... I don't really know how to do cloth, you guys, so I'm just going to fake it. Emily's coming in here and hating. She's saying it looks like turkey legs. It looks like who? Turkey, turkey legs. legs. <laughs> she's making fun of you, Chris. Oh, no, me. she's making fun of Aaron. I don't have turkey legs. <laughs> I have chicken legs. Okay. Okay. Aaron, there's no copying, so stop looking at my drawings. <laughs> he keeps leaning over, Molly. You get you have that kind of friend in high school yeah. that he's always just trying to like I need to come in there and slap his hand. <laughs> right? The teacher's like, keep your eyes on your own paper. So we can give him a little hair here if we wanted to. That's probably a little bit too much for what our storyboard oh, is. Oh man. Just because we're being crazy. <laughs> he has calf implants. That's the song. <laughs> <laughs> he does have calf implants. And so there's Aaron. I'm done with my shot. 
Check mine How out. are you guys doing? I think I got mine. It basically, Aaron just looked over. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> He's yeah, straight it, up ripping me side. off, dude. Aaron's <laughs> legs, though. Look at Aaron's legs. He's got some <laughs> malformed uh, thing going on right there. Look at this. And he's got the non-confident line. He even, he, he's ripping <laughs> up, man. This is called the Mexican rip-off. What are you doing? You feel guilty about that? Get this dry out of here. You learn how to do Wait, things, I, I right? changed it up a little bit. I got one leg. Oh, this is nice. Oh, first not bad. Not bad, not bad Mark. Nightstand, but I'm afraid of it. looking into the danger <laughs> zone there, dude. Come on, dude. Wait, the, the, the all right, all right. Over we, we need to hold adjust on. that drawing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can fix this drawing right now. Okay, just for Me the internet. Too, I can fix it. We can fix it right now. So I'm gonna have Aaron have an ass first of all, <laughs> <laughs> right? And then we're gonna shoot this thing down really fast. Awesome calf action. Oh, right? now the perspective looks. So more, he's got a toe, more right? Right, and he's gonna wear like jockey briefs or something. Yeah, let's so see, for the you, ha this you have shoot. to give him something <laughs> right You're there. You're not naked, all right? I mean, you don't have to give him a lot, but you have to give him something. Okay. So there he is. What's that? Skin off the edge. That's your bulge, dude. Oh, okay. That's your boxer briefs, whatever. We're gonna Let's not make this cowboy. This. <laughs> <laughs> you have no agent. Agents says do whatever they tell you to do. Just shut up. I mean, it could even be a lower shot, but since we've got this. Now, started. he's a much more modern guy, so he's gonna have this bed skirt. You can't <laughs> no, no, no. the pink, bed skirt. Pink bed skirt. With pink little, bed skirt with, yeah, some, with yeah, like yeah. flowers. What's up with the bed skirt? I know, dude. Little, little Come on, man. On I told you, he's more of a. <laughs> <laughs> An everyday Ryan Gosling, dude. It's not going okay. to be. How do you thing. fix that leg? So your perspective though? is that's all like jank. It's like a little. Yeah. Yeah. The, the perspective is jank, and he's got club foot, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I tried to fix it. It's all no, right. I can picture that shot though. You that's, can. That's good. Watch this. I'll fix this shot right now. But it's a good idea. So we don't want to toss out a good idea just because the drawing is not great. So here's what I'm thinking. Right? <laughs> Some of the danger zone. <laughs> yeah, the danger zone. Dude. That's what I said. Right? So Aaron's getting out of bed. There, there's his elbow, right? The mitt. Right? So he's going to be a little bit tired. We're, we're not going to be able to see the back of that hand, but we're going to see a little bit of this. That's his face. And the ripness. His nose. Okay, can you guys see that shot? So he's bent over a little bit. Not yet. Now he's gonna get out of the bed. I'm gonna give him much beefier legs. I'm about to sprint. Right. Right. So he's he's like getting up off bed. Other hands back there. Waking up out of bed. So thumb, something like that. Right. So. What? What's that? No, it looks like I'm, like. Riding a bike. Yeah, he's getting over bed. to like catch a. So this leg will be catch a baseball. Back snapping here. football. Yeah, snapping <laughs> football. <dude. laughs> I'm about to catch so it. We're going to the quarterback. The edge of the bed there, something like that. <laughs> right. So I think the edge of the bed is here, and the other leg somewhere over there. Here's his brief. I'm trying to give you that ripped physique, Aaron. If you don't be kind to me, you don't know where this drawing is gonna go. Oh, okay. See, as soon as you drew so, this okay. line, I, I see it. No. But you, before yeah. that, <laughs> you guys, about to catch you, a gotta, football. you guys have to have every little detail in order for this to make sense to you, right? So I think it's like this, and then we're gonna follow that perspective line back. I don't know okay. about this one, man. So okay. I'm gonna go I mean, that. This it, is it can angle. be as a shot. It can be as a shot. It can be a potential shot. There's the bed, and we're gonna see the other corner of the bed right there, and his leg's gonna be in here somewhere. I don't know where it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> okay? You just got yeah, it. Yeah, okay. That's pretty good. Right? Yep. Boom. I mean, without an underdrawing, not bad, right, guys? Mm hmm. Okay? There's Aaron. And there's his face. Get all so? like stretch. Yeah. You just got that. Oh, yeah, that yeah. works. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, okay. I tried names. to fix the, the, the club foot there, you guys. I, I tried. <laughs> I did my best, but Mark wants the club foot in there. It's really, he's all about the club foot. Okay. He really is. There's his IKEA thing. And we just walk in the alarm clock back in here, and we're good again. Boom. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Boxes you are got, fairly easy got to draw. the shot. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Give him that butt muscle. Okay. Nice. All right. All right. We Let's got go. Another shot of this. Let's go. How about? 
One more shot. Pack in your Pack gear in, in your, your bag. bag. Yeah, that's like a suit. You guys suit. draw that sh shot. You can use my pen just to put it in your mouth. I'm gonna draw a different <laughs> shot. Just don't sniff it. Let's see. Hmm. Erica, what shot do you want next? Hmm. I guess we're about to find out from Chris. No, I'm asking you what shot do you think we should include? Got anything? I've been focusing on editing. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll let you off the hook. So let me let me think about it. Okay. Is he still in the house? Does he have to still be in the it's house? A backpack, yeah, right? yeah. He's so we have him leaving the house already and then all right, so I'm going to draw the lips of Aaron drinking coffee. And why do your lines sound so violent? Yeah, who is that? That's Aaron. <laughs> of course. Can you guys hear that on the mic? I can hear yeah. it here. I can hear it on the mic, yeah. He's getting angry with the paper. OK, I'm done with my shot, guys. Just trying to get something done really fast. Okay. Could you push it up in the frame? Yes, I can. Thank you. So this time I'm going to use this marker so you guys can see what this looks like. I just blocked this part in. This is an abuse of the brush pen here because this is not necessary for this. The chisel point one will work just perfectly for this. There's my cup. Boom. Aaron's drinking it. corners of his mouth. Okay. Aaron, Aaron staged a little bit on the shot. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. I'm talking about these fools. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Wait, I'm doing my chicken. Chicken leg? Chicken. Guess what? Sketching lines right now. Chicken butt? Yeah. <laughs> Stealing Chris's jokes. Kindergarten. Oh, Aaron's got a little stubble. I feel like we need a shot of him actually putting on his suit. That's gonna be at yeah, the beach. At the beach. Oh. It's at the beach. Oh yeah, yeah. He does takes his towel or whatever. Or just putting on his the last of his sweater. His just sombrero. His oh. Arm through. Yeah. His sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> his, I mean, I keep thinking his Mexican his Mexican sweater. Okay. All right, you guys. I'm ready. The folder. Now we're going to then look at it together. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. What are you drawing there? So now we have five shots. Space Invaders. Is that the uh, the wetsuit? <laughs> it's the, the wetsuit. Wet 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yours is like crumbled in that okay. one. Okay. Okay. You guys explain your shot and hold it to camera while I, I fix this. I'm okay. Let me go first. Put it right here. Put it right there. Let's see. Get it out of the way. So we got. <laughs> That's so Talk cute. Through, you Are see? you throwing someone? So this is my wetsuit right here, and it's like this is my balcony. I'm outside. This is the railing, of my balcony. This is my barbecue, and then this is like this hook I have here, and I hang stuff there. Right now, it's got the wetsuit hanging because it's from the day before it dried in the sun. Okay. Throw in the sun. I got it. I got it. You know. Look, I'll help you out when you're drawing. Okay. Okay. First of all, if you're looking up and you're gonna do that, that's cool. Now, what you want to do is you want to draw your shoulder, right? And you're gonna draw a little bit of that part and I'm reaching out to that thing, more or less, right? Yeah. And you're gonna you're gonna draw your head like that. Oh, Chris, your you're so good at that. Okay. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you're gonna have. Thank you. Oh. Right. Yeah. And I don't know where the other arm is, but let's just say, because I said just try to bend the hand. I don't know what it's doing. Just bend the <laughs> hand. Yeah, it's just so like you have the shoulder will. blade and you have the back of the head. And then you just block in your hair. Wait, shouldn't he have his backpack on at that time? No. Who, who knows? No. This is he just likes shop. He's just grabbing so. his stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. in the bag. Yeah. Okay? Then you can do this part. This part is going to be very easy for you to draw. Because you're going to draw that part and you're going to draw the underside of it. And then you draw lines underneath it. Just really fast. Yeah, that's okay. it. That's it, right? And there's something here, a trash can? That's my barbecue. 
Oh, okay, like a Weber? Let's say a Grillmaster 2000. Whatever. See, I'm just going to indicate steel. it. I think you get too stuck in the reality. Yeah. I it's know. just whatever we want to draw it to be. Okay? That's your wetsuit. Now you're ready to go. Okay? That's nice. your shot. Cool. That's nice. Quick and easy. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Once you do it, it's easy. Okay. Now, Mark, what do you got? It, it looks a little nasty. Side what shot, are you doing here? A little flat, but he's putting bread in a bag. <laughs> no, it's his wetsuit. Yeah, I see it. the backpack. I see it. So you see, like, your, your tendency is to frame the shot really flat. Yeah. Well, Put the thing one is, I, thing I in can front visualize it. Like, Put one in thing in front of the other. Okay. okay. So all you have to do is rotate the camera a little bit, either behind him or in front of the bag. Watch. I'll redraw your shot. Your shot gives Aaron's, like, massive, massive biceps just kind of completely <laughs> out of proportion. Give you a big chest, right? too. So a big gut, too. You guys yeah. need to know this. When you have a conservation of mass, this is a straight cylinder right here, right? You guys can see this. When you bend your arm, this mass has to get pushed together. So the side that is away from the bend is flat, and the side within here gets bigger. Up. Right? So you're going to see this part's flatter, right? And then this part gets fatter. Okay. That's how you can draw that, okay? Oh, I see. That's, that's the easy thing to do. So let's take that drawing, let's fix it real quick, okay? So we have this here. Would you want him to be in front of the camera, or you want the bag to be in front of the camera? Bag. Okay. I think that's a good choice. Yeah. So I think of the bag as a rectangle. Okay. You have to think of things in Basic simple shapes. simple geometry. And I'm going to just take a real quick moment to draw this so you guys can see. I think we're a little bit above the camp uh, the bag like he's coming on top of it and putting things into it. Yeah. Okay? So, if I draw a box, this will orient me in terms of like what I'm going to see. Let's say that this is the backpack. Now the backpack has this part that splits like that. Oops, I messed up that line. Sorry. These lines have to follow each other, okay? Splits? It splits because it's going to unzip. It's one of those, like, it's like a sack with a drawstring, so you just... And then whoosh. Okay, it's a cinch. That's fine, but for the sake of yeah, what whatever. I'm saying, okay. right? And there will be a strap here usually, right? Mm -hmm. And then this part now is going to be open, so this half of it splits out this way. So then I, I take that half and I open it this way. Mark, you see that? Right. And it's going to break here, and that's how you get your backpack. And then you're just going to round the edges okay. for the final. Yeah, you can round the yeah. edges, and that's fine. I see. So, you know, so it's a little bit more organic. And now you know what you're looking at. Uh, you guys see that? It's yeah, like a Pac-Man. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a 3D Pac-Man. And we don't really care that much, like, what is in it, because you're not going to be able to tell anyways. Mm -hmm. What's more important now is where's Aaron's body in relation to this backpack? Over here. Is he kneeling down? Like right behind it. Yeah. Right? He's probably kneeling down. Is he sitting down or one leg's out front? We don't know. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say his... His waist is here, something like that. So if I put two points for his hip bone, one, and then we're gonna say like, because the, the perspective converges down like that, one leg might be kneeling down, I don't know, kneeling down this way, right? And the other leg might be like this, and he's gonna put stuff into the bag. We could also cheat and change it, making this leg down and this leg forward if we wanted to. I see. You see that right there? And that's the lead leg, wow, and this yeah, is the yeah. back leg, and then we can just have hands in here. So the hands are important here, that we just indicate where the hands are, and then everything else will follow. Mm -hmm. Can you see that now? Yep. Okay, Aaron, here's your six pack, your eight pack, right? I feel like it's just out of frame. Just so you want to walk it back into frame so you can see your musculature, right? right? So let's ink this real fast, okay? We can start with the hand. So I'm gonna start with the hand. The hand is like that mitt that we talked about. And the thumb is really what tells you what's going on. If you just draw a little bit of the, the thumbnail, it gives you all the perspective you need. And then the rest, you can kind of cheat a little bit like that. You see that? Yep. Okay, so I don't know what's here. It doesn't really matter. Something is inside the bag. And all we want to do now is to soften the corners, do the strap, make that black underneath. These things usually have a little texture, it's Cordura or something like that. Okay, now this part of the backpack probably is a little thinner. We don't really care about this part, okay? And maybe there's a zipper tag thing right here. Boom. Okay. You guys get that? I can see it. Right there. So what we do is we'll just block this part out real fast. I generally don't want to use these markers for blacking things out because there's not a lot of ink in these things. 
Okay. Now, only a dollar though. Yeah, but I don't have that many of them. So you'd use something like... You use the right tool for the job. You don't use a like jackhammer. Yeah, I would use that one or this fat one because look how much ink is in this thing. Right. That way I can maintain the life of all my markers and it's going to be consistent. So Aaron's foot is out here. He's not naked at this point, right? So he's got shorts on or something. Hopefully not. Really tight shorts. His biker shorts. And then, right? So now we need to draw that part because that lets us know what's going on. And then this foot is gonna come back here. There's the heel. You guys see that? Yep. Okay, and there's the waist, and whatever else is gonna happen here. What's up, dude? I don't know, it's good. Don't go there. It's just good that, you know, with a couple of lines, I can totally picture it. Yeah, if you know what lines to put in. Yeah. Right, that's the key. All right, that's the shot. Okay, now, Love this. We'll give that a minute to dry, guys, and then we will then erase it. So you erase it. You gotta erase away from the sticky part, otherwise it'll crunch up. Why don't you hand me the folder? I'm gonna insert a couple of shots, and we're gonna just try some edits right now while we're waiting for that to dry. First, yeah. we'll take this. I, I think it'd be great to see Aaron actually drink the coffee. Okay, so there's the there's him drinking the coffee, and let's get the shot of him out of bed. Where's my other bed shot? Okay, we want chicken leg, or do you want chicken thigh? Chicken leg. Chicken leg. Chicken leg. This is chicken leg. Okay. Me, me, me. <laughs> bah, whatever music you listen to, Aaron. Gets up, slips in, right? And then he's going to get his cup of coffee. Good coffee. Bing, he's awake. There's him drinking coffee. His eyes right? open. And he's out the door. Nice. Boom. Nice. A little sequence there. So Let me try to get this into the frame. It's getting a little messy here, you guys. Can you guys see that? Mm hmm. So three yeah, okay. will and five. Boom. <laughs> Slippers on. Coffee. Drinks it. <sighs> out the door. I'm trying to connect the coffee shot in three frames. It's totally working. Can't see so the you can solve What's that? Can't see the outside. Right, and then I'll move it up here, and then now it's out the door. And Should because we show the people in the wide? They, they can see here. Hold on. Give me a second. Let me just marker this in to indicate lighting direction here. Okay. Boom. Beautiful. All right. Now I'll hold it up to the frame so everybody can see it at home and we can see it like this. Okay, so that's what it looks like, you guys. So we're starting to do a sequence here and we're almost out of time. Why don't we take this opportunity to take some questions and let's have a yeah. conversation with the people. Mark, you got that shot ready? Mark's very yeah, careful. Right right right. He yeah. want to ruin it. Okay, guys, beautiful. please ask your questions. I give, am give me monitoring the, the chat. I'll show you how to do this. What was that, Molly? No, I'm telling the people, ask questions. Oh, okay. This is a good time for you guys to yeah. talk. Well, I'm going to recap on, this is all giving me a flashback of when I had class with Chris. And it's making me actually want to pick up the pen and draw again. <laughs> Just I like the like grid lecture <laughs> who made you jump back on the computer and design again like a beast. No, no, no. Not next to you. I'm just saying I want to... Oh, okay. I want to do it on my own time. In the other room. Yes. In the privacy of your own home. Chris, you were the one that told me about enough chicken scratching. Just give me that straight line. And ever since then, I've been drawing straight lines, even though they're not always the right line. I have to draw them a couple times, but it's straight and no more chicken scratch. Okay. All right. Guys, I'm going to hold up our six frame shot sequence, the beginning of our story. This is gonna take ten years for us to sort of this. It'll be, <laughs> we still it, it'll be global too. warning. Go, yeah, we haven't out. even gotten yeah. there yet. Okay, so I'm gonna Sorry, hold guys. it up, you guys, so you guys can see what's happening here. So first we have the alarm shot. Beep beep beep. Aaron gets out. <laughs> boom. Right. Aaron gets out. Ugh. And then he goes for blah, 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 and the coffee's doing its thing. Drinks and it then up. he throws some stuff. Right. You can even put the camera inside the bag and when he zips oh. over it's like Whoop. you can see it closing you can just like, close it on you we're always looking for transitions things that open and close make a lot of sense mm -hmm. so what we do here is we would roll camera have him perform the entire shot once and we punch in tighter and tighter and we're done you guys follow what i'm saying you'd go with the probably 30 millimeter mm -hmm. shot you would do that and then aaron would walk through close the door 
and you would punch in with a 50 or 60 millimeter, mm -hmm. go do it again, and then the 90 is just where he grabs the door. You really tight. 120 So each millimeter. shot you do with different lenses? You don't have to, but I'm just saying, because I know this shot is important, you, you want to just grab it a couple of times, and you're there. Okay. Gotcha. And you know this is the shot, so boom, boom, right. boom. So the cool thing about this is, let's say Mark's the DP and Aaron's the first AC, first assistant camera, right? Aaron's already got the next lens in his hand, ready mm -hmm. to be uncapped. Mark's like, got it, cut. Okay. Take it off, swap boom, lenses. swap in, Aaron's getting the, the, the 70 to 200. He's ready to go, boom, boom, we're done. Get a long shot. Cut, we're right. good, okay. right? You may also do a dolly a track shot here where you dolly past the mug as Aaron's about to leave the thing. Uh, so the mug, you, you guys know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so the, the, the mug is here and you're gonna move the camera like this to reveal Aaron right. a little parallax. as he's going through, yeah. Parallax works when you have something close to the foreground. Yeah. If you shoot a long shot and you do this, you could barely tell it's moving at all. Right. But you put a bush, a pole, a cup, anything, yeah. and I'm closing one eye because that's kind of how the camera works. And you move past like that, it has Aaron's reaching the door, and you'd have to rehearse it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So you're like, okay, I got my ins and outs, you'd mark it on the track, and you're like, okay, I'm ready. Aaron, go, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, boom, doors closed, perfect. Okay. Done. Now creativity happens. We're not worrying like where we're gonna put the camera, we don't know anything. Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure it out, 30 minutes have gone by, we're losing light, we're losing money. This is so important, say you have a budget and a time constraint with the client, you know, you don't wanna mess around and just shoot. You don't, remember, in, you don't mess around, you're a pro. You, you can't, you gotta you're lay all pro, this down man. so that you get it, you know, become more efficient. Yeah, this is it. Yep. Let's now you can it. get creative. Aaron can say, you know what, I need a plant in that corner, or we need to put a piece of artwork that's not distracting. And we can then put in little messages that relate to the larger story some other point. Yeah. For example, there could be a picture of a bird in there. <laughs> and it we would know. It's and like later foreshadowing on, it's just, something that's whatever. It's later. always yeah. there. And you know that. what? And and his slippers could have a bird print. Ah. So we can sneak in little things in here. So later on they're like, oh, this is all about the birds, isn't it? Look at this guy. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Look at this. Watch this. I'm gonna do a little something like right here. Origami. Origami bird. Oh, like prison I can break make does. One. No, straight up out of Blade Runner. Is Aaron an android? We just don't know. <laughs> I know because he's too dirty to be an android. If the androids are this dirty, I was like, <laughs> the androids future brush their teeth. <laughs> has, it's a dark, dark future, right? Dun dun dun. The teeth just fall off. The teeth fall off, and new teeth come in. Okay. Man, this perfect. is what happens when you let people in your personal life. Man. That's what happens. <laughs> or you, you, or you, you guys think. This. I'm dirty. Well, Wait till you get to my apartment. It's even worse. worse. <laughs> <laughs> we want the grudge. It'll it confirm it your worst I'm nightmares. Have things you have though. to walk wow, in there with masks on. on. Okay, and we even have this extra shot in here that we could use. Now we have a little something here. Like Chris, a B shot. Look at this, guys. Options. We're ready to go. Boom. Okay. Chris, this, I have two questions. We're going to call this the intro set. Okay, I'll get to you in a second. Intro, and then you can do out, you know, your closing, your open. Mm -hmm. Look at this, you guys. You open, show up on nice set, tape this on the wall. That's right. You tape this on the wall. When you're done with the shot, you put an X through it. We're done. We got it? We got it. Oh man, we forgot to get the shot. Now here's what a producer would do on the day of the shoot. They're like, you know what? There's an overhead, there's a couple overheads. We would shoot those out of sequence and get those done because we don't want to change the lens or the setup. Overhead? Like an overhead shot. Like top down oh. shot. Yeah, it's yeah, like overhead. if you have a different setup, they were like, let's knock these three shots out gotcha. first mm -hmm. so they shoot out of sequence. Mm -hmm. So a line producer would take these, move these shots in a totally different order, and they're like, great, we're gonna group those together, you can get those done in 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Right, and then we'll, we'll have to take a break here, and we'll do this, and then we're gonna go to the beach, and we'll come back and pick up the other shots, because the lighting will be better. Okay. So they organize all this stuff. Now the great thing about this is now, what we have right now, gentlemen, I'm gonna use a little academic term here, is we have a shared conceptual framework. We all know, including our audience at home, and Molly and Erica, we all know what the heck we're gonna do. So mm -hmm. the client can sign off on this. You can work with multiple teams. Mm -hmm. So Mark can say, okay, Aaron, I'm gonna shoot at uh, with this ASA or ISO, with this kind of lens, with these kind of cameras, with this color space. And we can all do it. We can work simultaneously and it's gonna be a beautiful thing. You got some consistency there. Yes, and I wanna do one more shot, but before I do that shot, I'm gonna have Molly ask her question. Okay. Go ahead, Molly. Uh, Rachel's asking, do clients approve your storyboard or is it for internal use with your creative team? That's a great question, Rachel. And I'm going to say that the clients only approve the storyboards when it's a big enough job. 
when it's a small job, we storyboard just for ourselves. We probably don't even storyboard. We'll just do a shot list, and then we know what we need to get. Because mm -hmm. if you've done this enough times, I'm going to say we need a close-up shot of an alarm clock going from 5 to 5.59 to 6 a.m., and then the guy slams it. Okay. And you can read the treatment, and we would have that kind of trust. If you guys were pro cinematographers, this is all you do, I'd be like, Mark, and he's like, I got it. I'm going to do like a 200 lens on that. Is that what we're thinking? Mm -hmm. Shout out to I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what we want. Right. And he would already know. Okay? Yeah, I think it would help if I'm doing this for some of my shoots because when I work with different people, they might not understand the type of naming for the shots. But I would have a shot list and say, hey, we need to get you know, this shot. It's got to be in medium. It's got to use this lens, this type of frame rate. So it's all in text, but if I have it storyboarded in a graphic visual, it makes a lot more sense. Yes, it does. I notice too, like a lot of times when I do my shoots, I just go there and then I don't do any of this. Just turn then, the camera on. Yeah, I just see what looks good in the moment, but then I'll have an idea of how I think it should look, but the, the guy I'm working with, he doesn't have the same idea, you know? We don't have something we can like refer to. You don't have what we call a, plan. a shared, a shared whatever, conceptual framework. framework. Yeah. That's right. Hey, Chris, could you lift the post -it? Yes. Thanks. Mm-hmm. I got an idea for something. Are you doing another? I'm doing another shot. Let's see if I can guess it. Also, Adam asked, is it, will there also be a behind the scenes of the shoot later on, maybe in editing as well? That would all be interesting. Yes, there probably will be. Yeah, I'm probably We're going to do our best it. to document this entire thing so you guys can learn along with us how you do a proper shoot. From storyboarding all the way through to the finished thing. I'm so here's what I'm thinking, you guys. Here's a little line. Go ahead, Erica. You gonna say something? I'm probably gonna shoot it. I'm gonna shoot the the behind the scenes. Yeah, the the camera behind the camera. Okay. So this is something that I'm going to do right now, you guys. Uh, check this out. I'm gonna assume that Aaron's in a spot where he can actually see this happen, where there's a house down here. But I don't know. I don't know if he's that high up, right? I'm gonna assume there's some windows. So whatever. So this shot doesn't work, but don't worry about it. Okay? So that's like a house. That's another house, assuming. Oh, I messed up this perspective line. Mark, do you know what I'm doing here? I don't. So this is the balcony here. And then this is Molly's shot. I, I wanna always give Molly her master shot. And the sun's coming up. Oh, thank you, Chris. So yeah. much better now. Isn't you're, it? You were missing that main. Uh, I'm missing the key. Life is complete. The money shot, guys. No, this is what's gonna give you the Emmy. <laughs> right, gonna shoot some rays here. So I'm thinking that we just have some kind of time lapse shot somewhere in the neighborhood. I don't know. Mark, you know what I'm talking about now. What is this back here? This is his wetsuit, dude. Oh, hanging okay. on the hanging line. On the, okay. Okay. Just hanging. This is the open back part, right? Okay. Whose house is this? Just oh whatever God. the neighbor. <laughs> it's Johnny's house. Uh, what do what does that matter? He's like, that doesn't look like my neighbor's house. He, he, draw this. Kind of he has a different like, chimney. On. He has this, he has God. that. Has a, Molly, you remember <laughs> the literal club? Were you part of that I mean, class? Like, who do you think I am? Wait, what is it, Chris? I don't think so. Oh, you weren't part of the literal club? No. There's a whole bunch of designers in my class that everything they did was just so, so literal. literal. Oh, no. It was brutal. That wasn't my class. They're like, uh, how could you fit a glass inside that thing? Like, that doesn't make sense. Is that what pedantic means? Pedantic? Pedantic. pedantic. No, pedantic's like all the little details. That's what pedantic is. Okay. It's all the boring little stuff, guys. So that's the wetsuit. It's hanging on a line here, you guys. And there's a little T-lapse, right? So if I wanted to, I can shoot some light rays from here through here. That's what I'm trying to aim for. Okay. Right when the light shoots through here, through here, you're gonna get that beautiful thing. So this would be like the last shot. shot. No, this is the first shot. Oh, first. Yeah, think about it, guys. Before he grabs the suit from no, the no, no. Hold on, hold on. Look at this. This shot happens before this one. Sun's coming up. Beautiful time lapse. Beep, beep, beep. So we get a little production value here, right? Mm -hmm. Sleepy neighborhood comes, uh, awakes, right? So now we can slide all our frames down. I'm not gonna do that. I'll just put this over here. This is an alternate, and I'll put it right on top here, like that. Okay. Okay. So there's some some cool T labs because I don't know I don't want to map out the whole geography. Just mm -hmm. find a shot where you can shoot something where light passes through it, and you can see the clouds and the sun because mm -hmm. he lives in a beautiful part of town. That kind of thing, beautiful neighborhood, right? There's my magic clouds, right, you guys? And I'll do a little kind of lines here to incline. I have to go to the airport soon, like now. Just got places okay, to go. Well, I got I got things to do. I'm gonna oh. double as the driver. 
That'll yeah. be Max. Okay, so time lapse, something, alarm, mm -hmm. shave chicken leg, turkey legs, coffee, drinks, <sighs> pack, out the door, alternate, alternate, something, okay? That's what we're doing. Yeah. All right, you guys. Right, guys. What I want to do is wrap this up, and I hope you guys enjoyed this storyboarding classroom, I suppose, Design Fundamentals. This is part two. Go watch part one right now. Yeah, there's a hidden surprise there if you haven't seen it. There is? There is. We don't know what it is yet. The birds. Oh, the birds? <laughs> this is the birds. Okay, we're all good. Was this process helpful to you guys? Dude, I loved yes. it. You loved it? Yeah. Okay, you need to work on your drawings, right? I'm going to draw all these again. Oh, you are? I, I see you're trying now. What do you I think? like that. Boom. Not bad. He, his nose got busted up. <laughs> Somebody punched him in the nose real bad. He's doing the master thing. It's okay. All right. And you guys, of course, we are way behind on our goal. We really do need a lot of you guys to step up. In order for us to hit our goal, to keep the content going, we need 140 of you guys to step up to become a sustaining member per day. Some said that they per stepped up today. Day. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. that. And, I saw that. And Thank Nathan you. and Joseph donut, donated on Super Chat. So I want to say thank you. I saw that. You. Thanks, okay. guys. Thank Thanks you. for being a donut. Donut. <laughs> <laughs> Molly's still working on her reading. Of course, I can, I can give Donated. Molly Donated. Donated. All right, time. You guys, you know where the money's going to? It's going to speech classes for Molly specifically. Really? I promise you she's going to get much better if you guys keep donating. And the more you give, the better her, her English is going to be. Just guaranteed. <laughs> it's guaranteed. I hope you guys enjoy this. Next time, I think we're going to be at the beach. Oh, really? Yeah, Don't we have yeah. the outro? No, we'll things? have to just do that off camera. Off camera. We'll off it. camera. And yeah. then we'll talk about the shoot, and we'll go out there. We'll, we'll, we'll wear a lot of SPF, so I, my, my pale, fragile skin is preserved. <laughs> See like how you like a beach beach. I'm going to have like a six-foot hat with a brim. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> or I'll, I'll be like an Asian things. ninja. Just like yeah. a little thing. Okay, anyways, that's enough of this. You guys, thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time for part three of this ongoing series, Design Fundamentals Storyboarding. This is it. See you guys later.